every single AEW pay-per-view in the history of the promotion so far. There's no need for an intro, but here's one anyway. Right then, just in case you haven't been here before, this is a tier list. I am Gary YouTube. When I went to Clash at the Castle on Car at Cardiff on Saturday, <laughs> right? I was there, right? Waiting for a hot dog and a small boy came up to me and he was like, are you Gary from Cultaholic? Yes. And I was like, yes, I am, son. Yes, I am, kind of. And I took a picture. And it was a nice little interaction. Aww. So there we go. We're here to do some more Gary YouTubing in the form of a tier list that every single basic bitch YouTuber does. And this time we're doing every single AEW pay-per-view ever. We'll put them into several tiers ranging from the best to lovely, 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 all right, just about bearable. And I don't even think we'll touch the bin today, but who knows what might happen in the World Wrestling Federation. We'll kick things off with Double or Nothing 2019, mm. which immediately I'm thinking up at echelons of the tier list. I'll just run through the headlines from that show. The pre-show Battle Royal was fun, and Hangman won, which made sense. Yes. Glacier was there. Sean Spears made his debut. MJF in the in the heel role was very good. Joey Dinella, of course, took that horrible table bump off oh. the apron to the floor. That in the first ever proper AEW match, uh, singles match, I should, I should say, Kip Sabian defeats Sammy Guevara, a big flippy twink off. Mm -hmm. Remember that from back in the day? The EVPs then come out on the stage, of course, and take a shot of Dury by rounding up the 13,000 seater capacity to 20,000 because this is pro wrestling. And then Kenny Omega's like, oh, there's 40,000 here. They're all so cool, aren't they? <laughs> awesome Kong makes her debut. People think Brandy Rose is going to wrestle, and she was like, let's make this awesome. Miz doesn't come out, Awesome Kong does, and she has a, she takes part in a fatal four-way match. Dark Order Pervert Edition make their debut, of course, with their human throne. Then we have Asha Kong, uh, Shida, Ryu Mizunami, and Riho in tag team action, which went on for bloody ages. We know all of them now as yes, well. Yes, we We've do. We've grown to love them. Yeah, Rio was kicking out everything this match, just like Triple H and O3 I've written down here. Uh, Cody smashing the throne before his wonderful match with Dustin, of course, the blood. Cody being the heel, even though he wasn't the heel walking into the match. Uh, Dustin being the old school babyface. Earl Hebner was the referee, which I forgot about. DDP getting rid of Brandy was an iconic moment in AEW mm. history. Uh, the crossroads kickouts from both men in the build-up to the finish. Um, and I need my brother mm. after the bell. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Uh, one month after going into the Hall of Fame, Bret Hart was there unveiling uh, the AEW world title with who, Jack? Jack Whitehall. Jack Whitehall. <laughs> yeah, ITV's Jack Whitehall. What was he doing there? I've got no idea. I didn't even recognise him at first because he'd had a shave. Yeah, I don't know why he was there. No, Must a be a wrestling fan, fan yeah, yeah clearly. Get on. Paul the Holly. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. What is he doing? Have to, what is he doing? I don't know. Yeah. MJF then, of course, came down and just took the piss right out of Bret Hart. And it was fantastic because it is MJF. Then we have the Lucha Bros versus Young Bucks, which was ridiculous. Phoenix just... Was he introducing himself on the big stage proper for the first time for apart many from, people? Yeah, apart from Lucha Underground. But yeah, yeah, he was probably. Yeah. yeah. Doing the uh, Whisper in the Wind style destroyer on the apron. Mm. Oh, my God. I can't even wrap my head around that. But anyway, anyway there we go. Uh, that was a fantastic match. Then, of course, the main event of the night saw Chris Jericho become the first AEW champion, toppling uh, Kenny Omega. <laughs> Which, in hindsight, you know, oh, no. did he become the champion or did he? Oh, sorry, no, he, he didn't did, become he the became champion. Became the number one, number he one got contender. Into the match with yeah. Hangman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, lads, got that one wrong. Uh, so yes, he beat Chris Jericho. Then, of course, we had the, the debut of John Moxley oh. after the bell and the brawl with Omega through the poker chips on the stage, rounding up off. Sorry, a fantastic pay per view. Yeah, my God. I'm thinking one of the top two, and I can't decide which one of the top two. I think we go lovely, and then with you know the power of hindsight, we yeah. could move things up. Because I think we might be slightly biased for being there, and, and not just the event itself, but the Atmos mm. around Las Vegas was incredible. I remember the press conference when, when Dustin Rhodes unveiled the Dusty's Favourite t-shirt, and yeah. everyone went, oh, I was like, this is going to be, it's going to be like nothing we've ever seen. Mm. Cody and Dustin was an incredible match. There were, there were certain bits where it felt like a bit of a mishmash of different styles all thrown together, and I don't know if it had the best flow of any AEW pay-per-view. But yeah, I agree, lovely, lovely, at a minimum, definitely. Yeah, at an absolute minimum. Moving on to Fighter Fest 2019, kicks off with Private Party, SEU, and Best Friends having a really good tag team match with an appearance from the Minions of the Dark Order. Ooh, mm. spooky. Uh, there was supposed to be a match between Lever Bates and Kylie Ray, but instead, because obviously Kylie Ray's... Mm. Uh, well, I don't even know what the right way to say this. It's just sort of, it never got confirmed, did it? There were sort of issues going on. Yeah, she left. She and just I think wasn't she there. Mental health reasons and stuff. She's doing all right now, yeah. isn't she? She hope, yeah, hope best wishes to yeah. her. Uh, we got Ali versus Lever, the librarian gimmick. 
made the match a load of bollocks and not <laughs> enjoyable of all uh, at all. Sorry, um, but uh, there we go. Michael Nakazawa then took on Alex Jabaley. Oh my word! In the best match in AEW history, who maybe well, this is about Alex. Obviously, maybe he paid to be on the show. It for this seems match. like he paid to be on the show. Um, he clearly never wrestled before, but wasn't like just bad. He was just laughably, laughably bad. Just not even should have been on the card at all. Baby oil, baby oil, mandible claw, mm. all the big things. A lovely thong as well. Then we got Christopher Daniels versus Seema. Do you remember him? Yes. That man there. Short and punchy affair. Well, lots of textbook wrestling I've written down here. And then we've got Nyla Rose versus Riho versus Yuka Zakazaki. Uh, storytelling. I play is this when the push happened? Yeah. 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 Uh, Yuka had the, the crowd in the palm of her hand. But then, of course, we got to the beat down at the end uh, where Nyla beats Riho. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Nyla, do my favorite. Nyla beats down Riho after the final bell. Uh, Yuka saves Riho, but then Riho shows down Yuka. And it's never which... been solved. Yeah. It's the biggest drama in AEW history. And we've never found out why. And we did have a rematch in the Owen Hart Foundation Women's Tournament qualifying. Riho defeated Yuka Sakazaki on Rampage, but it wasn't mentioned never at all. mentioned. Yeah. Me I ha- actually tweeted about it multiple times, and one time Sean Ross Sapp replied to me wow. with an answer. He said that um, they'd, gone, they'd gone go-karting and Yuka had cheated to win. Oh, my God. He well, was taking the whittle out of me. I don't know if he was. That I sounds like was. a shoot story, that. Okay, we know, backstage enough. altercations mm. in AEW. That's true. They're not limited to not being on the racetrack. Mm, fair enough, yeah. There's <laughs> no <laughs> friends on the racetrack. <laughs> no, not at all. That's what I always say. Then we get Hangman beating a, a, so, several men in a multi-man match which involved Jungle Boy, uh, Jungle Boy with Luchasaurus in his co- uh, corner and MJF. The, the, I've written down nothing to write home about this one, but it was fine. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah. And then we get Cody versus Darby. And this is where we got the time limit draw, was it? Yes, mm. the three count ending uh, just before the time limit expired. Great. Or just after the time limit expired. And that's when we started to think, maybe these established names are going to put over some of these young boys. Yeah, and this was the first time I'd saw anyway. Uh, the failed cough and drop off the top rope to the apron from Darby <sighs> Allen, which was absolutely horrible. Um, but there we go. Cody getting desperate to beat Allen towards the time limit just made things all the more fantastic. Then we get Sean Spears after the bell in that match with the not worked chair legendary stuff in the early days of AEW then we get the elite elite with the books in their cute children's cal- uh, ca- sorry carry I never put karaoke there karate karate, karate yeah, outfits it was I'm not awake fighter, yet Ross. it was a street fighter they look like little kids on Halloween <laughs> uh, they defeated the Lucha Bros and Laredo Kid with uh, Omega winning with a V trigger on Laredo out of thin air then a one wing angel to put things to bed mm. then we get Joey Janela versus John Moxley in the early days of AEW Joey Janela one of the, the highlight acts I would have yeah, said just having it? these big bomb burning hot, uh, hardcore matches the barbed wire chair stuff was gnarly uh, the boards with the barbed wire was gnarly the massive elbow drop uh, from Janela through the table it was gnarly uh, there was thumbtacks aplenty uh, there was all just sort of uh, you know just hardcore stuff wasn't it then Omega attacks Moxley after the bell oh, yes. um, and then references to Fighter Fest made throughout the show which did nothing for me because oh the Fire Fest it was a bit yeah, 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 yeah Fire yeah, Fest yeah. sorry uh, because it was years later wasn't it they've kept the name though yeah I guess. why not um well, initially, when you mentioned that there, I was going to go just about bearable, but I think there's enough highlights in it. I'll go, right, all right, yeah. It's right. definitely yeah. a stage down from double or nothing, yeah. but I don't think it's uh, just a, just about bearable. I should mention that Fighter Fest and I think Fight for the Fallen as well were only pay-per-views to international audiences. Hmm. So if any minds there are going, that wasn't a pay-per-view, don't worry, for us it was. It definitely oh, was. is that right, is it? I, think I so. remember watching it on Fight, so maybe that is true. Mm. If it isn't... Blame him. Uh, fight for the fall in 2019 we now go on to, which starts off with B Priestley. Remember her? Yes. She gets a massive reaction as she teams with uh, Shoko Nakajami. Nakajimi? I'm terrible with these names. Uh, she, they defeat Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and Riho, which is the match where, of course, Dr. Britt Baker ran to the, uh, ran to the wrong corner to get a tag. Oh, that match there. Wow, that's a very distant memory. It is a very distant well. memory. In their daily's place, when they're in the sunshine. Mm. I, I, I. This is a match that was also ruined by the Fight TV stream, flashing up graphics and all sorts of stuff during it. Do you remember that one? No, I don't remember that. Oh, bit. man, it was painful. Just kept getting in the way. Um, uh, Shoko, I've written down here. Is that her name? Shoko? She actually, Shoko, won, yeah. won the, won the match for this one before Brie and B and Brit brawled mm. after the bell. Yes. That's a tongue twister to say. MJF, Sammy Guevara and Sean Spears and defeat Darby Allen and Joey Janela and another man okay. who we can't really talk Fair about enough. anymore. Uh, one of the stronger matches on the card because it was fun. Spears and MJF doing all those sort of stuff. Uh, it was like, can they coexist? Because this was still in the road- roller coaster era yeah, of MJF yeah. being a Cody's pal. Obviously, Sean Spears was feuding with him at the time. Um, just got lots of stories coming out of this match with all six men involved and it was good. 
Yeah, I think it was good as well, yeah. Mm. Weirdly, yeah. Say. But there we go. Uh, Joey Janela uh, referencing his fight with Enzo Amore uh, with a spot where he backs up into the corner and then fights some air was a highlight in this one. Uh, Spears picks up the wood in that one with uh, MGF looking on and not coexisting with him. Mm -hmm. uh, Brandy Rhodes versus Ali got 11 minutes. Wow. I remember the ending, I think, to Brandy with a spear. <laughs> I feel like. Brandy was doing the Cody verse before Cody was doing the Cody verse. Yeah. Uh, distraction spot at the, spa, at the start uh, is the delusional baby face Brandy goes for a handshake, but out comes awesome Kong. Oh. Kong distracts her with numerous, uh, distracts the referee at numerous points. Brandy does win with a massive spear. Ali was saved in the post match beat down by Aja Kong. Mm. She must have been departing soon after this event because it feels like, like not like. After the first couple of events, she was she was gone. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. was it Aja Kong or Awesome Kong? Aja Kong, I've written down Aja here. Kong, Maybe okay. they were building towards an Aja versus Awesome match. Mm, yes, that, that, rings bell. that rings a bell. That rings a bell. Evil Uno and Stu Grayson defeat Angelico and Jack Evans and a boy and his dinosaur. From yes. back in those days, the closing sequence was massive, uh, fun stuff with lots of big moves, and Marco Stunt was a literal human weapon. I just remember, um, remember Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy's early theme tune mm. was, was it sounded like you were embarking on a big adventure yeah, rather just, than just having a party. Dramatic music yeah. from movies and whatnot. Mm. Uh, Adam Page defeats Kip Sabian, which went 19 minutes and five seconds. People hated that it went for 19 minutes. Yeah, because Hangman was supposed to be a big boy on his way to the title, and Kip Sabian wasn't a big well, boy. That's fine, though. Yeah. I, I remember Kip Sabian getting heckled by the guy in the Everton shirt who always turns up at NXT. <laughs> he he doesn't seem like him. a nice guy, does he? I refuse to comment on that. Just you know? going off what, how he goes on in the crowd. Of the, the toffees. Uh, <laughs> and this is uh, the match where we got the power bomb over the top rope onto the elevated ramp by Hangman to Kip. Yes. Um, Kip, yep, Kip going for the kiss with the fan and marking him off, murking him good and proper. Yeah, he, yeah, he got him, yeah. yeah. Page was then jumped by Jericho, who was dressed as a Dark Order gimp after the bell. Mm. That's what this match was remembered for. Then we get the Lucha Bros defending, uh, defeating SoCal and Censored, the tag team tandem of the Elite Hunter, Hunter before he was the Elite Hunter. Frank yes. Kazarian and Scorpio Sky uh, Aubrey dropped the glove so threw it back and they did oh, it again yes, oh, watch yes, it yes. like uh, double stop and the uh, package power driver for the win uh, one of the stronger matches of the night Kenny Omega then defeats Seema slick that like, was great. Like, proverbial off a gold tooth I think I remember that one being th there was loads of meteoras back mm. and forth yeah uh, Seema lay, uh, lay, laid Kenny out on the timekeeper's table, climbed above the crowd, jumped down, and all sorts of happened, yeah? Meteora. Yeah. Kenny slid off the table. Oh, that was that much where they yeah. went mad. Sorry, everybody. I, I can't tell if you tell, but I've gone back and watched these events and just made notes all the way through. So this is what it's going to be like all the way through the video. I'm sorry if it's unbearable, but there we go. Uh, we're trying to get through all the big deals from these mm. events. Uh, uh, getting out the one-wing danger with Seema repeatedly it was the big story of the match until he didn't, and then Kenny won with that. Yes. The Young Bucks then defeated uh, the Brotherhood. They were known by then of Cody and Dustin the Rhodes a long match a clash of styles it just wasn't as good as I think they intended to be yeah. uh, Dustin did keep up with everything though Cody was getting isolated um, but then he got the win in the end they won yeah proving that Cody was right and that he needed his brother they won I've written that down there have I got it wrong I don't know Dustin kept it with everything isolated Cody to get the win in the end and wow. proved Cody right and get the fair enough he needed his brother I, in my head the Bucks had won I don't know why Matt's um, promo after the bell this might be where from it was cut short after the bell where he was left confused as to what he was meant to say they were going to turn heel $150,000 was raised yeah so <laughs> yeah, that it was, was good weird. for charity but they lost the match yeah yeah um, um, this is, is it, oh, maybe it, I don't know if it's down and bearable I think it's the, the weakest show we spoke about so far it definitely is the weakest one and at this point, uh, at the time, I remember I was thinking, oh, I'm starting to worry a little bit about AEW right now. Why? Because the, you'd had every show had been a step down from the previous one so far, but it wouldn't last. Mm. Uh, five of the Fallen. I think, yeah, go down to, you know, all right, but just not as yeah. not as high up as yeah, the rest yeah, yeah. of them. All Out 2019, we get the 21-woman casino battle. Royal Nyla Rose wins this match by last eliminating Britt Baker. B Priestley was involved with the sort of Rumble 92 spot right. with uh, pulling Baker's arm, uh, allowing Nyla to swoop in. Brandy Rhodes was using uh, Awesome Kong as her battering ram, but it just didn't work. Mm -hmm. Private Party defeat Anne Helico and, and Jack Evans are from a fun pre-show match with TH2 turning heel. <sighs> Proper with an attack on their opponents afterwards. Then we get SoCal Uncensored defeating Jurassic Express. A really popular Luchasaurus. This is when he was sort of taken off yeah. in terms of his state. Uh, massive hot tag from him. Uh, hitting the best melter ever on both Marco Stunt and Jungle Boy. Uh, for, I don't know. Well, yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah. That's happened there. 
Uh, Pack, who replaced Moxley for this show. I can't oh. remember what for. What was that for? Uh, I think Moxley hurt his arm. Mm, I That's can't I remember. Think. I should have written that down. He defeated Kenny Omega by technical submission. Both oh, were taking chances. Both were taking chances, but not liberties are written down. I yet. was shocked by the result of that one as well. Yeah. I thought Kenny was going to win for sure. Oh, man, he still hasn't won the big one, though, has he? Wore Jordy Pack. No, he hasn't. All these years later. Uh, they weren't taking liberties. They were just taking little chances there. A uh, little catch. Uh, catching legs on the guardrail from Pack. I think he just did some sort of move and then just clipped his legs and fell down. It was horrible. Uh, Pack reversing things to get the big win in really quick fashion. Wah! Yeah. Makes sense for Kenny to get out of there, of course. There yes. uh, the three way cracker barrel clash. Darby getting sunset bombed off the apron through a table. Janela getting monkey flipped on an upright chair in the middle of the ring. Darby oh, doing right. a skateboard thumbtack spot for the first time in AEW. The coffin drop with the Cracker Barrel on his back for I the win. Sponsored the show, maybe? Mm. The cracker they, haven't, they haven't done that for a while, have they? The cracker Barrel thing? Yeah. I'll oh, do it again. Bring it back. Bring that was the their barrel. thing during the, the, the pre-AEW being the elite days, wasn't it? It's so weird Go now. Look, even though it was only a few years ago, it's, it seems like a world apart. It is, yes, it does. Evil Uno and Stu Grace. Maybe it was a Cody thing. The Cracker Barrel thing. Yeah, I just picture them all sitting on the rocking chairs on like the outskirts of the, the, the Cracker Barrel. Yeah. After a hearty meal. <laughs> uh, Evil Uno and Stu Grayson defeat the best friends of Truck, uh, Truck Chuck and Trent. Mm. Uh, a good back and forth match, but the spooky pervert minions help the Dark Order win they this match. They haven't really taken off yet. People weren't buying it, were they? No. I'm glad they went on the trajectory. They yeah, eventually yeah, did yeah. go on. Uh, Sheeta versus Riho to determine who will face Nyla to be the first champion. A classic big versus little woman match, even though the big one isn't even that big. Yeah. But Jim Ross loves saying that Riho is very smart. Not, not, a not a pair. Not a pair. Not a pair. Uh, spin and tilt will roll up spot for the finish was great, as it hasn't really been seen before I've written down there Ooh, Ooh. fair enough spinning tilt the world Roll, yeah, oh, yeah oh, sounds yeah. fancy Cody and his Star Trek entrance uh, versus Sean Spears with his entrance taking place at 10 10 p.m. Eastern time oh. is that late is that early it's late it must be late but it was 10 10 ah 10 10 10, 10, 10. 10, 10. Oh, I put the pieces I'm not awake yeah am I uh, stipulation match um, one member of each of their gangs in their corner MGF was picked over Brandy and DDP <sighs> Oh, that seemed a bit of an iffy decision. And then Tully Blanchard was in the other corner. Uh, Cody was being super serious in this match until MJF accidentally distracts the referee, Earl Hebner, which allowed Spears to hit a low blow and turn the tide. Then Tully passed Sean his belt and starts whipping him pretty brutal stuff. And then uh, there was a running DVD on the ramp by uh, Spears, which was gnarly. MJF in the cheerleader role was great. That was weird looking back on there, how just naturally, charismatically baby facey MJF was in that cheerleader role yeah. for Cody. Because, uh, well, we all know he's full of, you know, S-H-I-T, don't we? Uh, on Bust on Buster. on Anderson gets a spine buster yes. spot. Um, Spears, a uh, bit of a surprise loser as Cody was almost... I was surprised. Yeah, he does a, van da a dominator to set up Van Dominator. Van, Dom Dam Van Dominator. Van Dominator. Jesus Christ, Ross. Uh, set up the win via Crossroads. I, I was surprised because I remember thinking... Because this is... It sounds weird to say now, but this is before Sean Spears was just kind of a lackey. Yeah. It seemed like he was maybe going to be a main eventer. So mm. I, I remember thinking, oh, Spears will... I think I did the predictions for this one and definitely picked Sean Spears confidently. Yeah. It was proven wrong. Yeah, because he was a big boy back then. Well, he still is a big boy, but like in terms of the... I know the roster's got bigger as time's gone on, but back then he was like a big boy. Yeah. And there was a role for a big boy in the roster, I yeah. thought, back then. And then this was the first time we had the little tease of MJF turning on Cody with the little chair bit at the end, like, ooh, will he, won't he, will he, won't he? Pentagon does a destroyer on Matt Jackson off the top of a ladder through a table as the, the Unbox take on the Lucha Bros once again in a big old bloody ladder match. Silly stuff. Phoenix really stole the show with his springboard stuff I've written down here. One Wonderful analysis. Uh, Nick Jackson doing the spot where he gets pushed off the top of the ladder in the ring, falls down, but manages to purposefully clip his ankles on the top rope, which sends him, you know, going down faster. Now, I thought weird. that was an accident. He does it loads, though, doesn't he? Uh, He's done yeah, it more than yeah. once, for sure. It looks so terrifying. It does look terrifying. And it looks like it would hurt more than it would already. Yeah. Uh, Matt unmasked Penta. Then uh, they get the super uh, super kick on Ray in midair. And then Lucha Bros won before Proud and Powerful came down in their masks yes. to make their AEW debut. And it's a shame to see where things have gone for those two lads. Yes. Uh, Hangman, with his horse and his family at ringside, he's going to win the big one, isn't he, against Chris Jericho. Uh, lots of Jericho heel beatdowns, but didn't really work because they were getting... Sorry, didn't really work in getting cheers 
this for Hangman? Yeah, the crowd wasn't with Hangman, were they? It was. They weren't convinced yet. No. Which is weird to say looking back. I remember the videos that were leading up to this where Hangman would be, the books would call him and be like, how are you doing? He'd be in his house watching a different Jericho match each time. I was mm. like, the detail's fantastic. But this is before he was a funny alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's was, the yeah, crucial yeah. difference maker yeah. for Hangman Page and AW. Then Hangman just twats Jericho above the eye and he starts to get cheered. Lots of finishes, lots of kickouts. I've written down here a bit of an underwhelming main event that could be because the show was really long. And I yeah. doubt it was as long as what we're getting these no, days. It probably feels all right looking back. Yeah. I still think it's... I think it's lovely, but not as lovely as Double or Nothing. Yeah. But it's certainly a step above Fire Fest and yeah. Fight for the Fallen. We're going to get cold AEW shills here, aren't we? <laughs> Uh, full Gear 2019. Uh, Britt Baker was wrestling with the flu. Uh, she take, uh, took on B Priestley on the buy-in with Darby Allen watching in the crowd because of reasons. Okay. That happened. Yeah. Uh, fine match, but Brandy and Awesome Kong come out with a knife and cut off some of B's hair. Oh, this was the start yes. of the best faction in AEW history, the Nightmare Collective, with Mel. What happened to Mel? <laughs> Justice for Mel. And of course, Luke, well, Luther wasn't there yet, was he? This was just the, 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 the yeah. seeds were being sown. Uh, Where's Luther gone? I don't know. He goes on dark, doesn't he? Sometimes Does still he on dark elevation. Uh, the Bucks and Proud and Powerful Ned have a match, a uh, well put together match with the story of selling from not Matt, but Nick Jackson on his sore leg, not back. Yeah. Uh, the Rock and Roll Express are there to save the day yeah. <laughs> with Ricky hitting a destroyer and a suicide dive just because he can't still. Yeah. Uh, then we get a long pack versus hangman match, the brain buster on the outside to an upright chair to hangman was brutal but then Hangman came back from the jaws of defeat in a ding-dong battle to hit a lariat and the dead eye for the win. Is this when he did the dead eye off a ladder and it was terrifying? Or was that a different time? I think that was a different okay, time. Okay, fair enough. Maybe. That I was in know. some sort of no DQ match though this yeah, week. Yeah, okay. And then we get, what do we get next? We get Spears versus Janela in a big silly bollocks match as we always did with Joe Janela. Way back in the day, uh, Spears with the spike pile driver on the floor with Tully providing the assist was a brutal moment. Mm. Uh, DVD, a Death, a Death Valley driver, in the ring brings an end to a match which was short and it was fine. Then we get SCU versus Private Party versus the Lucha Bros. Lots of spots as you would expect. A fun match. Phoenix yet again taking the piss. A bit of a strange ending. Uh, Penta was just walking around the outside looks like he got up from the, the selling of his whatever he took in the build to the finish too early uh, Daniels in the Penta costume and stops a post-match beat down from the Lucha Bros a bit weird <laughs> a bit weird that one especially after Jericho did it all mm. out wasn't it yeah he did the same thing uh, well, well, all in all in yeah, yeah just shake it all it, about yeah. uh, Riho versus Emi Sakura then this is when they didn't tell the story very well wasn't it why is she Freddie Mercury <laughs> what's going on there <laughs> yeah. no. no it was uh, Riho, uh, Riho was the student of um, oh yeah and they didn't really uh, yeah didn't hammer that home you have to have fun <laughs> Uh, she, the final third was excellent wrestling a nice match with the teacher student dynamic that they, they didn't really big up in yeah, the build of the good. show uh, Cody ver uh, sorry yeah Cody versus Jericho but MJF is still in the corner of Cody despite what we saw the little tease with the chair if Cody doesn't win oh. he can't challenge for the AEW title ever again which looks like might actually be Turn one of the, the only wrestling stipulations in history that's actually going to be true yeah. then we have Keiji Muto Arn Anderson and Dean Malenko as the judges at ringside for the piece uh, lots of lots of wrist locks uh, hammer locks and stuff making for a slow start uh, Cody smashes his face open when he landed oh, on the elevated ramp I... do you remember that one? yes I feel but, like he might still have the scar, you know. Yeah, but blood makes everything better in AEW. And this wasn't different here. Uh, Mrs. Rhodes slaps... Mrs. Rhodes? Yeah, Cody's mom slaps Jericho in the face. Oh, I was like, why have I called yes. Brandy Mrs. Rhodes? But no, it was his mom, wasn't it? Uh, Jericho kicks out of the dusty elbow and crossroads. MGF throws in the towel on behalf of Cody, who then cries. Uh, and then Cody gets kicked in the box for oh. good measure by MGF as the turn is cemented. Fantastic drama. But it doesn't end there. Well, technically it did end there because this, now, between Moxley and Kenny was a lights out unsanctioned match mm. and AEW was not liable for anything that happens blood via barbed wire <laughs> this match was too far for Dave Meltzer <laughs> you know, I remember said well it's just too much it's just too much violence <laughs> Do you imagine just sitting there at home on, like all alone just like I can't look yeah. <laughs> doing that thing Matthew does in the podcast <laughs> oh. uh, blood via barbed wire coated weapons lots of them there was a mouse trap board there was golden chains there was glass being raked across the face of Moxley both men landing on the glass uh, Mox uh, did the sharpshooter uh, sorry Mox was in a sharpshooter being forced to crawl through the glass to get to the rope to escape not like rope break yeah, but to yeah. escape the hold then we get the trampoline the, the, the trampoline thingy with the barbed wire floor mm. do you know what I mean yeah, instead I of a nice yeah. bouncy soft surface yeah. it was barbed wire uh, Omega going for the Phoenix splash on the wooden boards in the ring which then led to the finish that was brutal I think this was 
an okay one. I think that I was going to say this is lovely and better than All Out. Oh, I'd, I'd go. Oh, oh. This, this is the big difference, though, with this card. There's lots of variety on this one. This was something for everyone. I also think the big match is delivered. Cody and Jericho, in a sad way, yeah. delivered. And the, the lights out match as well. And, yeah. I, I think, and of course, there's teacher student dynamic of Emi Sakura of and Rio. I might edge it above that one, you know. I'll, I'll go for it. Why not? Oh. Why the hell not? I think that they're all good, aren't they? There hasn't been a dud so far. I feel like this is quite relative. Like, if. if, if AW hadn't set a high bar, we'd be looking at like a full gear or whatever, and like, oh, what an amazing show! But I think well, there's better yet to come. Should we change the tier titles? No. Revolution 2020. After Stu and Evil Uno defeated SCU on the buy-in show, all of the Dark Order beat down SCU, leading to Cole Cabana making his AEW debut, and he would have no implications in the future of anything ever again in AEW. The numbers were too much even for him, though. He was mm. being down by the Dark Order. The higher power is revealed to be Christopher Daniels. But he attacks the Dark Order. Swerve, bro, at Judy of a reference. It was a big out of Judy of a reference. I still find it bizarre that he was meant to be the higher power because it, it feels like it was about 50 years ago. Yeah, like, he should have been about 12 years then. old. Yeah. When in reality, he was about 27. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hager then makes his in-ring debut for AEW versus Dustin Rhodes, who necked on with Hager's wife. What a baby face. Will. What, what a, a guy. lovely, wholesome baby <laughs> face. Uh, a big, hard-hitting brawl, as you would expect with these two lads in the ring. Uh, more uh, Dustin being more energetic than he ever was in really have written down here, which Whoa. I think is quite scathing. It's but also... True, Dipping the cap to his AEW mm. run so far. Uh, Hager doing all sorts of MMA things for the win. Uh, Sammy versus Darby in a four-pillar show-off thing. Mm. Sammy doing a 6.30 through Darby on a table off the top rope. Darby then picks up the win in quite form formulaic fashion, I've written down here. <laughs> and in the end, there was lots of bombs in this match. Yes. Not like bad things but no. lots of big moves um, uh, Hangman versus Kenny uh, Hangman and Kenny versus the Bucks I should say and I've, I've, I've buggered that up at the wrong time because this is one of the greatest matches in AEW history Hangman and maybe Page. the greatest match in AEW history sorry Hangman and Pal can't do it either Hangman <laughs> and Kenny yes versus the Bucks do you want to wax lyrical about this for a it while it is fantastic I know that these days we're all a bit sick especially you but I, I agree with you of uh, the story being who are the Bucks friends with who are the mm. Bucks not friends with however at this point it was fresh and the the little twists did, they didn't overdo it it was subtle as well yeah. not just the match Ross but the post match wow, the post match because Hangman was there looking at them over the apron you thought he's going to do a buckshot lariat but he didn't he got in the ring and then the Bucks did like you know Michaels would half turn away from someone and then super kick them mm. they both did that but then they just turned and like walked off or shook hands yeah. or something one of the best matches it's up there with maybe Cody versus Dustin for me oh yeah big time mm. there was a nice story heading into the match with like the Kota Ibushi references and stuff like that then we have Kenny who had a sore shoulder he try he, he can't get the one winged angel hooked in because mm. of his shoulder so Hangman does it but because it's not his move he gets a two brilliant then we get the story after the match as well deliberately tease wonderfully done Nyla then defeats oh sorry defends again against Chris Statlander a tough spot to be in obviously following yeah. one of the greatest matches in the promotion's history the crowd were noticeably tired Statlander does the Cody splatting on the ramp spot, mm. twatting her head in the process. Avalanche beast bomb from Nyla for the finish was scary, but also totally awesome. <laughs> <laughs> MJF versus Cody and his debuting neck tattoo. This was the event when we first went, oh my God, what's he done? Uh, Cody biting the bottom rope to break a submission was oh, great. Yes. Uh, MJF working Cody's toe and oh. biting it at one stage because he's a kinky yeah. bastard. Uh, Cody allowed uh, one whip with the weight belt by the referee because everyone hates MJF yeah. all these referees in AEW they do anything they want don't they <laughs> uh, Cody lets the uh, emotion of the, the, the piece get the better of him and had had him beaten but then went for one too many crossroads and then a shot with the dynamite dining ring later and MJF falls on him for the heartbreaking oh. pinfall right result though you yeah. couldn't have MJF lose at that point oh no No. oh no the chase is always better isn't it yes oh yes oh yes then we get Orange Cassidy versus Pac in one of the most anticipated oh. matches in AEW history will it be Pac wrestling an Orange Cassidy match no it'll be Orange wrestling a pack match he's because gonna try. he's going to oh, try sorry, I've cut you off there. <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> all sorts of reversals I don't even know what to say about this one it was it was like orange was teasing pack at the start with the little kicks and stuff but then when he when he when he started actually trying the crowd were electric for it yeah. it was fantastic uh, there was a Superman punch spot where it looked like Orange Cassidy was going to pin Pac but no eventually Pac wins with the brutalizer mm. and then we get Jericho versus Moxley and his eye patch uh, in the end Jericho goes for the good eye and does a uh, sorry so Moxley sort of manages to do a, a blind paradigm shift but then removes the patch because his eye is actually fine and he wrestled a match with a patch on for no reason uh, a nice match with Jericho well, doing lots trick of him. oh well yeah 
just made it harder for himself, didn't he? Tricked him. He was but clever. Was it an iconic moment with Moxie taking off the eye patch? Um, when I look back at AEW iconic moments, it's not the first one I think of, but I still think it was good enough for, for a big moment for the first title change. It was mm. nice. Uh, so there we go, that's the end of the card. It was. It's in the best for me. It's in the best, yeah. It's one of the best AW events ever, I think. All, all, all bangers. Yes. No filler. All bangers. A nice length of the card as well. Not too many matches. (sighs) Tony. Not too many. (laughs) Double or nothing. Twenty twenty. We move on to now. The best friends defeated Private Party in a match which wasn't very good because Private Party hadn't wrestled a lot, so ring rust was rife. Uh, That's what I've written down there. Wait, was this the first pandemic? This was Uh, the first pandemic show. show. Ah. Brian Cage made his debut. Did he? Yeah. In what match? Casino ladder match. Oh, when he threw Darby Allen over the thing in the For body a future bag. Oh, AEW wait. World Championship match. Darby dropping in, as the kids like to say, on his skateboard <laughs> off the top of a ladder uh, through a ladder bridge was horrible, but also fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Brian Cage did look very good in this match, climbing the ladder with Orange Cassidy on his back until he was buried under a massive... Not like not that way. Like, literally <laughs> buried under a massive pile of uh, <laughs> stuff. The other burying would obviously come later. Yeah. Um, uh, the massive poker chips were involved. Uh, Joey Janela was in this match doing big silly Death Valley drivers like he always does uh, off the top of the apron through the pile of rubbish uh, Brian Cage then gets back in the ring uh, picks up a ladder and with Darby on it and just sort of goes over the top rope and drops him down to the floor and yeah he goes on to win yeah it was um, it was good but I, I think that um, at the time I thought wow Brian Cage is really going to be a mega star in AEW especially after his impact run yeah, he, was, yeah. he was the main guy there wasn't he then then who was it who didn't sell his finisher was it John Morrison? Can't remember. I was uh, uh, Well, Austin Aries didn't sell Morrison, so you might be mixing might that be up. Mixing that up. Nah, yeah, it's been a long day. Mm. Uh, MGF versus Jungle Boy and another sort of pillarish twink off, if you want. I don't know about Jungle Boy. Is Jungle Boy one of the, who are the four pillars? I've gone blank MGF, here. MGF, Jungle Boy, Darby and Sammy. Sammy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. There we go. Uh, lots of time for a match that went from world of sports to classic heel stuff. From MGF with the sore knee and the doctor coming out, a SummerSlam 92-esque pin from MGF was enough for him to get the win. Now, I love this match, but I remember... A critique of it, it might have been Jim Cornette, to be honest, but someone made a, a, quite a good argument saying, yes, MJF's proven that he's really good at selling in this match and it's been a fantastic wrestling match, but why is the heel the one getting all the sympathy and working through a knee injury? And I was like, oh, mm, it's a valid hot point. damn. It's a valid point. Yeah. Uh, then we get on to Cody versus Lance Archer with none other than Iron Mike Tyson at ringside oh. to present the winner with the not finished but new TNT title. As long as he could stay away for long enough. Yep, I've written down there, Tyson was caught yawning on camera. <laughs> he was all over the shop here. Uh, Archer throws Cody out of the ring over the top rope onto the elevated, like, you know, down the stairs that bit. Um, Cody comes back with a, a cross face uh, with Archer's own hair across his eyes. Mm. Everybody dies. Uh, Cody whapping out all the moves, including the DDT in front of Jake the Snake Roberts. By God, a transitional move in front of Jake like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jake goes and gets the snake from backstage but Tyson stops him and sends him packing Mm. two crossroads for the win for Cody and yes yes I remember people being upset that Lance Archer didn't win but he would get his hands on oh no that was the IWGP US title never mind never mind never mind he never did what's Mm. he doing now I don't know. Oh. oh Hello, Lance. Uh, Statlander versus Penelope, who was a last-minute uh, replacement for the injured Dr. Britt Baker. It turned into a decent match, but probably the weakest on the card, but that's probably because it was just thrown together at the last second, um, with Statlander hitting a blue thunder bomb and a big bang theory for the win. I'll tell you what, I think Chris Statlander might be the least, the most the most unlucky AEW wrestler of yeah. all. She seemed to get injured just when her star was always rising. Yeah, two massive injuries as well. Yeah. Folks, she's okay currently. Then we get Sean Spears versus Dustin Roads, and this is where the wheels are starting to finally come off for one Sean Spears because you know he, he, the, the pants got squashed in his pants. The pants. Who was on the pants? Tully. Tully's, Tully was Tully's pants. face was on his ass. Mm. Um, this this was the moment he died. Uh, Spurs, uh, Spears had done a news report saying Dustin had retired. He's like, oh, welcome to Sean Spears News. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and then he appeared here in a suit because he said Dustin was washing his ring gear, but then Dustin appeared, and that's why it led to his pants getting taken yeah. off and those those lovely undercrackers getting yeah. Uh, unveiled um, you know what it sounds stupid but maybe that's more of what the AW shows need these days silliness. silly shortness well, maybe, splattered in between the f- yeah, yeah. 50 minute time or maybe, yeah. maybe it doesn't need to be silly maybe just shorter matches which we did get at the most recent one to be fair but, but it was in the wrong places minutes. I would argue 
I would as well, yes. Yeah, in yeah. the wrong places. Then on back on this card, we got Nyla versus Sheeta in an ODQ match. The this was really good. The first, they had a few, didn't they, during lockdown? Yeah. And uh, Nyla put Sheeta through the poker table. Uh, Sheeta's doing a jumping, flipping thing off one of the poker chips. It was really gnarly and really cool. Uh, sending Nyla into another poker chip. Uh, Sheeta hitting a top rope falcon arrow, which Nyla then kicks out of. She mm. did the deal had the biggest way possible. How did she kick out? Then a few kicks and a kendo stick shot to the head, and she wins. Yes. Uh, Moxley versus Brody Lee, which was absolutely fantastic. Mm. A security guy in the ring just sets the tone at the start. Uh, the count out rule was abandoned for this one, with Moxley throwing a massive poker chip at Lee and then doing a paradigm shift through the ramp. Whoa, I remember oh, that easy one. Easy dub. Mm. Yes. Uh, Lee then kicked out of another paradigm shift, uh, but then kicked, uh, sorry, got another paradigm shift done to him, but kicks out of one, then another, then kicks out of two, then Mox chokes him out, and that's just good. It was a really <laughs> good ending because it. it it, even though he lost, it kept Brody strong. Yeah. So, yeah. And then we got the first stadium stampede match when cinematic professional wrestling was at its pump. Uh, then we get uh, sort of football entrances down the sides of the st- uh, around the sides of the stadium. Hangman's on his horse chasing Sammy down the pitch. Then we're doing Matt Jackson doing a cool moonsault off the football post, the American football post, mm. not the soccer goals. Uh, Matt Hardy in his pool of reincarnation with uh, <laughs> with it was it was Ortiz and Santana, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, just doing all those sorts of. Uh, oh, was it? Oh, yeah, it was proud and powerful. Yeah. Uh, Dump in his head and asking the ref to ask him if he gives up while his head's underwater. Ask him while he's drowning. Um, but then we get Hangman and Hager in the bar. And this is where I realised with AEW cinematic matches especially, you're just not meant to take them seriously yeah. because they were smashing bottles yeah. over the heads and just no selling and all that sort of stuff. Just enjoy them for what they were. We had Matt Jackson doing his 100-yard Northern Light suplexes on Sammy Guevara, who got everything beaten out of him in this match here. Then we had the stuff with Chris Jericho and the mascot, the VAR. Uh, with Jericho on the pin, I don't know what they call it over there. It's not VAR. Jumbotron. It? Whatever it is. You know, action replay. Oh, you got action the, replay. The three, Sorry, yeah, yeah, The three count done uh, on Nick Jackson. Then we get Matt and Kenny repeating the golf cart spot with Sammy once again. And then we get Neo One's debut, which is Vanguard One's son. I, look, mm. I think it was, wasn't it? Was his son? Yeah, yeah his I think drone. so, yeah. And then, we, of course, we get the finish where Kenny Omega murders Sammy Guevara with a massive one-wing angel off a thing yeah. and through lots of other things. Sammy Guevara was the MVP of this match. Mm. He was running around... He was. I mean, obviously, they didn't. The film most it, violated it? person. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what. Or yeah. patient, because he was in hospital afterwards. Uh, but I also remember. Was this the one where Hangman and Omega had a bit of a nice bonding moment in the bar, where one had a milk and one had a beer, and they that went. Rings a bell. One yeah. of us drinks, one of us doesn't. But we're still friends yeah. for now. <laughs> Yeah. Was this the one where Conan was there? Or was that the year after? That might have been the year after. Might I don't know. Year after. Uh, but there we go. That was the end of Double Off. Double Off in twenty twenty. It's it's. Stadium Stampede was a hoot. It's a lovely for me, I think. Moxley and Brody Lee was a hoot, but the in a different way. The match was a hoot. Yeah, Spears versus Dustin, nah. Uh, Statlander, Penelope, not uh, their fault, really. It was thrown together. Cody versus Lance Archer. Yeah. Mike Tyson was ah, funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brian Cage's debut. Yeah, yeah I think it's I think it's love. lovely, yeah. yeah. I'll put it above the two shorter ones, Full Gear and... Um, Sorry, Fighter Fest and no wait, they're in the one below it. You know what? I'll I'll put it um where is it? Where's it got there we go? I'll put it at the bottom of lovely. You know, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's fine? Let's Let us know, know how yeah. wrong we are in the comments down below. Then we get to All Out 2020, which is ruined by one spot and one spot only. Can you remember the spot, Jack? This show I think was the one where Matt Hardy fell off the thing. Correct. We start uh, the card with Joe Janela versus Serpentico with Luther on the outside and being really distracting. Shockingly so, Joey Janela wins. Then we get Silver and Reynolds taking on Private Party, a match that got better as it went on. Uh, the silly string reversal spot was strange when you go back and watch it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, about, Private Party really. eventually picked up the win. Then we go to Britt Baker versus Big Swole in uh, the tooth and nail match. So this was when this was announced for the pre-show and Tony got criticised for putting the women's match on the pre-show. So then he went, fine, it'll open the main show. But it was cinematic, Ross. Yeah, one of, not one of the best cinematic matches no. either, even though Britt Baker put her body on the line for the business <laughs> on multiple occasions, as did Reba with the stuff with a dumpster. Um, and But the, at the end, they went, the drill was getting whapped out. Then yeah. we had the, the, the syringe with the Novocaine, which was, shoot, put into Dr. Britt Baker's leg. Um, the mass spot for the finish, she was knocked out completely. Yeah. She put her body on line for the business. Uh, the Big Swole got the win there. Young Bucks versus Jurassic Express. Uh, with the Bucks starting to get more healy by this point. Uh, Nick Jackson in the front row, I've written down here. What Did that he mean do? he jumped into the front row? Or Probably. Or was there a man in the front just, row? Just got thrown in the like front Nick row. Okay. I'm not very good. No, taking <laughs> the turns out. But then again, there are... 
20 and You've whatever shows. <laughs> <laughs> um, Matt and Jungle Boy doing the old Sean and uh, Shelton Benjamin spot with a big kick off the, the jump off the top rope. A uh, very heelish finish by the Young Bucks for a very heely team. Yeah. But they weren't yet. Not yet, not quite. But definitely on purpose, though. I think yeah. it was leading that way. Uh, Casino Battle Royal. This is where Hobbs looks impressive for the first time because this is the first time we saw him in sort of a big match. Oh, um, no. Is this the Matt Sidal one? Yes. Oh. Uh, then we get Son Sonny Kiss eliminates Jake Hager. Uh, mm. Matt Seidel then makes his big debut and slips hard. The slip herd around the world. No, the weirdness doesn't stop there. I mean, mistakes happen, of course. But then we get the fireworks going off for no oh, reason. Yes. I think because there was some sort of baseball, like baseball game baseball happening. Game uh, but the wrestlers are sort of stood there going, Yeah. What? What's, what's that? Yeah. Uh, which made it just even weirder. Um, Labor Day weekend. Yeah. Apparently, uh, whatever that is. What, Happy uh, holidays, everyone. Well done for working. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Cage put Darby. Um, oh! And thumbtacks in the body bag. I've just noticed this. This we're recording this in the midst of all the CM Punk and the Elite and all that. Mm. Happened on Labor Day weekend, work weekend. It's oh. a work, brother. No, I'm joking. Man. <laughs> this Sorry. tier list is a work. The thumbtacks. Yeah, in the body bag. Cage puts Darby, Darby, and thumbtacks in the body bag and just throws them. Yeah, he all did on the stage. Yeah. yeah, and then we get Lance Archer wins by last eliminating Eddie Kingston. That's a good winner. That is a good one. That's good, yeah. And he goes on to face, who was it? It would be Moxley, wasn't it? Those days. The Again, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Lockdown. Yeah. Uh, Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara. If Matt loses, he must leave AEW. And... But he mustn't, because it's pro wrestling. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> you can lose the match, and then it can be undone. Remember Just get that. VAR out. You yeah. Know, replay and all that sort of stuff. A cursed feud produced a cursed match with the fall from the cherry picker, as we call them over here. What do they call them? The They call them cherry pickers. Do they call them they? cherry pickers Crane. as well? Crane thing. Scissor lift. Scissor lift, that's what I'm looking yeah. for. Yeah. Um, with Matt Hardy twatting his poor old head off the floor. It was scary. The match wasn't called off, and they do another big spot for the finish, because, of course, if Matt loses, he must leave AEW, and there's no way to write around that with Sammy <laughs> falling from a great height to get the loss and can't answer the title. At this count. moment, the tone of the show just changed. Because it was a lockdown one and there wasn't a big crowd in attendance, I remember following a lot of the reaction on Twitter as it was going on, and everybody soured on it immediately because yeah. everyone agreed that match should have been stopped. And AEW were flapping as the night went on yeah. because Tony Schiavone was on commentary later in the night saying that Matt had, had spoken to the doctor and yeah, and the Twitter rightfully pointed out that it shouldn't have been Matt's call, no. it should have been the doctor's call. And then we had Tony back later again in the night saying that the doctor thought Matt was okay. So he buried the doctor for no reason whatsoever. And then we get the NWA Women's Champion and heel Thunder Rosa, we to look back on. Uh, but will it be weird in future mm. months? Because we don't know what's going on there either, do we? Uh, versus Sheeta for the AEW Women's title. Uh, Thunder Rosa's Death Valley driver on the apron there was a spot where Rosa's head just misses the steps which was scary considering what we just saw mm. in the match before um, Sheeta eventually gets the win in a star making performance for Rosa because she, she would get signed soon yeah. after this one. she was still the NWA the yeah, yeah. still the champion uh, Kip Sabian reveals that himself and Penelope are getting married on Dynamite and then says a handsome man is going to organise his stag do no oh. how did we not realise at the time <laughs> Matt Cardona, Scorpio Sky, Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall with Ali and Brandy Rhodes in their corner then defeat the, the Dark Order. That with... doesn't need to be on pay per view. <laughs> this is with the new TNT champion, Mr. Brody Lee. Oh, well then, fair enough, yeah. I guess that's why it's on the card. Mm. Colt Cabana, Evil Uno, Stu Grayson with Anna J in their corner. With the, my main takeaway from this match was Jim Ross, who was on commentary praying for an Anna J wardrobe malfunction. Oh my God, he did. That, that was that match. Oh. Uh, Colt Cabana just had to get, uh, get the win after Brody did all of the work but he goes for the moonsault and eventually loses uh, to Dustin and Bro Brody is fuming because he set it up for Colt but Colt just didn't do the easy mm. thing and win uh, Hangman and Kenny versus FTR so dissension is teased but then Kenny is being a great teammate <laughs> <laughs> Stop with the match is Kenny having his work his legs worked on and then Hangman being really good. Another really good teammate for this time for Kenny, obviously. Accidental V trigger to the face of Hangman though. Kenny's legs are gone, so he can't break up the pinfall. It isn't obviously quite as good as the Unbooks versus Hang Hangman and Kenny, but you know, it's still up there. I remember thinking that this match, if it had just happened on a different night, not a cursed night, it would have been fantastic. Mm. I was really excited for it. And then yeah, it didn't quite get didn't quite click as it should have done. It was sad. Was this the night when it was really hot? I think so. And JR was like, oh, so hot. Oh, <laughs> man, Jay, just take off your clothes, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, I think this is the night where Kenny cuts the promo. Where he's like, we need a clean sweep. I mean, clean slate. 
Mm. Some people are mad, you know, mm. cleaner and that sort. Mimosa Mayhem. This is oh, the car where this happened with man. Jericho and Orange Cassidy with oh. lots of lots of vat teasing, which is what we want now, professional wrestling. Yeah. Uh, Jericho going for a razor's edge into the vat, but then two Superman punches for, uh, on Jericho later, and he's in the vat. <laughs> I think... <laughs> From the minute this match was announced, I was like, that's how Jericho's going to put Orange Cassidy over in a match where he doesn't have to get pinned or submit. Yeah. But it's a, to me, it really seems like a main event of Dynamite match. Mm. That'd be a big fun Dynamite match, wouldn't it? Yeah, but on Mimosa view, Wednesdays. Yes. Everyone's pissed all night long. But, and then on, we have the... but on pay-per-view, I think it felt a little bit underwhelming. Mm. And then we get Moxley versus MJF for the world title. Mox can't use the paradigm shift. Dictator he John. loses the title. Oh, mm. yeah, Dictator John. Mm. This is when we're having all those sort of press conferences and stuff, wasn't it? I remember a lot of people thought MJF, this was his moment. Yeah, but, but it was He's still wasn't. waiting now at the time of recording. He won't be waiting mm. for long, though, will he? No, I don't think Four so. Four will happen. Yeah. Uh, Mox wants a brawl. MJF keeps, wants to keep things in the ring, understandably. Then MJF leaves the ring and it bites him on the arse because he gets bloodied open. He gets bloodied open, I was about to say there. He gets cut open, so he does. Uh, I like the finish where the ref's back was turned and he was dealing with Wardlow. And then Mox just sort of hits the paradigm shift but gets the win anyway. Just made Mox look really, really good. Yeah. But yeah. MJF, not so good. Uh, so that was, that, was, that was all out 2020. Two years ago. It's either bearable or bin. Uh, uh. I mean, the Matt Hardy spot goes a long way, but let's let's try and look at let's put it in the bin for the Matt Hardy bit and see what takes it out the bin potentially. All right. Jo- not the not the opener with Joe Janela versus Serpentico and Luther on the outside. No, no. Uh, the 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 tooth and nail match. No. Uh, Young Bucks versus Jurassic Express. Yeah, that sounded good. Casino Battle Royal. Matt yeah. Seidel's match. Oh no, that was bad because uh, of, of the slip. Thunder Rosa versus uh, Shida. That was yeah, a good match. Good. Uh, Matt, uh, the big eight-person tag for some reason. Uh, 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 told us it built up the dissension in the ranks of the of the Dark Order. I yeah, guess. Hangman and Kenny versus FTR, and then the Mimosa Fine. and I reckon bearable. Okay, there's I enough to just save it. Just save it from the bin. But yeah, that Matt Hardy stuff oh. was. Oh. There's, there's a lot of howlers. The the dentist match, the slip, but. The general action, I suppose, was good. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Just just out just, the skin of its teeth. Just about bearable. Uh, then we get the full gear 2020. We get Serena D versus... Uh, who who was it again? Who, I've written down K. I've forgotten the first name. K? K. Thingy K. Alison, Alison, Alison K. K. That was the one. In the buy-in match for the Ooh. NWA Women's title. A technical match. But, of course, Thunder Rosa comes down afterwards and goes, Oh, Deeb, I'll get you. Uh, number one contenders tournament final. We get Omega versus Hangman with the Impact Wrestling's Don Callis on commentary for the yeah. first time. Uh, lots of strikes, lots of big bumps. Hangman with a massive powerbomb on the apron. And then in the ring, Omega with a, a massive Tiger Driver 98 with Hangman's head hitting the mat first. It was brutal to go back and watch. Uh, two V-triggers and a struggling one winged angel for the win for Kenny yes don't know what you got I know I remember watching this match uh, alongside Owen on our sofa when I lived with him and he was oh he was just buzzing for Kenny Omega I couldn't believe it was he I can't remember if I've exaggerated that I think what I a saw, contrary I think I saw Owen wearing a Kenny Omega shirt once and assumed that <laughs> he's a huge Kenny Omega fan but I don't know if he actually is uh, I've heard him often go under the devil sky must be a fan of the song yeah. you never know uh, Orange Cassidy takes on John Silver uh, comedy at the start oh, as always with Cassidy a match, uh, yeah Silver rips down the po- rips the pockets out of the jeans and then after that moment it turned into a great match we saw the one armed gorilla press from John Silver uh, Cassidy wins a longer than expected match with a 1-2 uh, orange yeah. punch he and should... beach break for the win both of these but John Silver should have been TNT champion by now oh yeah oh he still could do it. He I'm still gets big responses. We're, we're just filming this a few days after All Out 2022, mm. and my God, he was good in that Oh, much. he was fantastic again. Oh. Cody Rhodes versus Darby Allen for the TNT title, with Darby dominating the early stages before Cody takes control. Darby gets thrown over the top rope onto the stage because he likes that sort of thing. Avalanche crossroads from Cody, but Cody's then conflicted with the weight belt, whether they use it or not. It's like Bret Hart and mm. Roddy Peeper from WrestleMania it 8, is. isn't it? Uh, a lovely roll-up exchange at the end leads to Cody losing the title sh- rather shockingly, so I think I remember at the time. Mm. Uh, Darby then gets assaulted by Team Taz before being saved by Hobbs, who seemingly turned down Team Taz at this point. But in hindsight, why did he do that then? Why didn't he just... It's not like enough, what Luchasaurus is not doing. Not enough now. rice pudding on the table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Need more rice pudding. Uh, Sheeta versus Rose again for the title. We get a beast bomb and Nyla lifts Sheeta's head up, even though she was going to win because she's a dirty heel. But this bites her on the arse. Yes. Uh, Vicky Guerrero takes a bump as well. Oh, that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got nothing against Vicky Guerrero, but Nyla 
didn't need a mouthpiece. She's one of the better talkers in the women's division. Strange. It could have been a lot of fun, that, but just mm. they never did anything, did they? But that's the women's division in AEW. Really, yeah. Yeah, then we get FTR versus Young Bucks, and I'll let Jack just rant. Why? Because FTR lost? Yeah, the wrong team lost. The wrong team lost, but it was for a... a right, wrong team won. Wrong team won, but it was for the right reason in the match. Yeah. Because I think Cash went for a 450 springboard thing, mm. and that's not his game. Mm. Don't do that. Don't get caught up in the action. And he took his eye off the ball. And I was worried for... A, this, this sounds silly in hindsight, but I was thinking, oh, is this going to lead to a breakup in FTR? Because Dax is so disappointed in him. But no, it's fine. He got a slap on the wrists and he was yeah, fine. He's just been a naughty boy, mm. wasn't he? Getting caught up in these young, flippy lads. Yeah. Super kick to Wheeler for the Bucks to win that match. Uh, FTR yeah. doing DIYs, meeting the middle finisher. Oh, yes, fantastic. This is what... It was a, yes, because FTR did the heart attack. Uh, Bucks did the twist of fate swan tom mm. bomb FTR did the it was like a tribute to tag team wrestling yes. all the way through the match nice until the finish the only thing that ruined it for me was the stipulation beforehand which they didn't need to add where the Bucks would never get, again it was the Cody stipulation they'd mm. never be able to challenge for those belts again if they lost and unfortunately everyone went well they're winning then yeah. and they gave did gave the game away didn't they yeah. then we get Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara again mm. but this time in the Elite Deletion which of course was pre-recorded and could be edited and all that sort of stuff but it didn't need to be I don't think I think this one was fine uh, much more like the final deletion than any other cinematic match we'd seen with Matt Hardy to this point uh, Matt was literally trying to murder Sammy with a golf cart uh, and, and then by because he squ Sammy was in the golf cart then Matt squashed it with a monster truck yeah, yeah, that yeah. One? it uh, just sounds like you're making up words there yeah, but it is true yeah. it's true yeah uh, Sammy was then thrown into a fountain then a hooded figure takes the hurricane hostage thrown into a fountain I don't remember that but it just sounds funny a <laughs> uh, hooded figure takes the hurricane hostage because he oh. was there Gangrel was there mm. uh, the trainer because he was the trainer of Sammy um, he's taking the hurricane oh well, I don't know what happened here Lake of Reincarnate <laughs> they go back into a barn don't they and Matt wins uh, with a concerto yeah. on the concrete floor and then puts Sammy in a bin I think it was what it needed to be it was what it yeah. needed to be lovely big stuff and mm. uh, then we get Jericho versus MJF and if MJF wins he's in the inner circle Whoa. Whoa. Oh, I remember these oh, days. Oh, this was like a, this was like like a Three Stooges sketch. It was just two lads trying to sneakily trick each other. And yeah. sla very slapstick. Yeah, it was both heels trying to win, like being a heel rather than one being the de facto babyface. It was just trying to outdick each other yeah. in many ways. Um, MJF did a disgusting heat seeker during this match. Wardlow gives MJF the diamond ring, but Jericho has the baseball bat. Named. Floyd. Floyd. Yes. Great name. MJF does the Eddie, Guerrero, not Kingston. And then when it looks like Aubrey's going to disqualify Chris, MJF hops up and rolls up Chris for the win with a handful that of That was tights. risky. He could have just waited for him to be DQ'd yeah. in KFA. He no out healed the heel. He did. Which makes him a bigger heel. And then in the main event, we get Moxley versus Eddie Kingston in an I quit match. Uh, of course, we get Moxley in the thumbtacks, Moxley bleeding, rubbing alcohol in the wounds on Moxley's back no. caused by... I thought Trick Williams invented that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Caused by what? Uh, the the thumbtacks holes oh, in his back. Yes. Uh, looks horrible. Wow. Well, it felt horrible, I assume. Maybe. I don't yeah, know. probably. One yeah. of those relatable moments. Yeah. We've all been there rubbing out the hole, haven't we? Um, barbed wire assisted bulldog choke was a sensational way mm. to end the match because it didn't make, make Eddie look like a mug for trouble. Similar uh, for, to the Brody Lee one. Yeah. Didn't make him look weak in, in defeat. So there we go. That was that pay per view called Full Gear 2020. Um. I think lovely. I think lovely. And a more varied card again than most. Yes, varied, but I think that's a good thing. I think it worked to its benefit, yeah. Oh, yes. Definitely a step up from All Out. I remember feeling relieved after Full Gear. Like, oh, they've not lost it. That was just a bad show All Out, mm. so yeah. And then we get on to the year that was 2021. Britt Baker and Maki Ito, who was the big surprise reveal because uh, she replaced the injured Reba versus Riho what? and Thunder Rosa. <laughs> what? Just Maki Ito, man. I love that and everyone's just twatting each other with weapons and she's just still on the stage just doing a little pop number. Yeah, I thought yeah, that was yeah. a nice little touch. Uh, Maki Ito, I've written down here, was terrifying and good <laughs> in a baby face heel thing. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Britt Baker, of course, picks up the win because at that point she was winning everything, wasn't yeah. she? She was like Triple H in 2003. Mm. Then we get the Bucks versus MJF and Jericho for the tag team titles. Wow, Mister, I don't remember this. Mister, you do remember this. What happened in the build-up of this match? We laugh about it all the time on what, the podcast. The, me and my shadow song. Father. Oh, yes. It was the the well, Baywatch oh run from the, 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 the Jacksons trying to save Fantastic. their father getting beaten up by Jericho and, and MJF, which was just stupid and weird and 
love oh, it's hilarious. Um, the Bucks are saying suck it a lot in this match. I've written down here. Seems like it was a bit of a running joke for some reason. Uh, Matt was kicking out of everything in this match because, of course, he was. Mm. When his back's not hurting, he's just burying everybody else. He's the worst one. Uh, then we get the Melter Driver and Super Kicks, which sees Jericho take the pin for the loss. Uh, mm. Fun match with lots of false finishes. Yes, fair enough. I don't remember that. That match is wiped from my mind, I think. Probably just because it was taken over by the oh, father. Yes, yeah, we'll great. save you. Uh, then we get the, the Casino Tag Team Battle Royal, where both uh, Evil Uno steal the show by getting <laughs> eliminated by running across the yeah. apron and bumping into the ring post to fall to the floor. And then QT Marshall eliminates his buys, the ass buys, before they were ass buys. Mm. Um, and they were in the Nightmare family. Uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus won fire in this one. Bear Country, it's weird to see how little they've done since this one because they were, they were good in this match as well. They were they were showcased in this match, I'd say. What yeah. are they called now? The Steel Nation. I preferred Bear Country. What, what the, the, I can't remember. Yeah. It's something to do with metal. <laughs> full metal bear men. Yeah. Um, Jungle Boy was on his own against a number of uh, full teams at the end uh, we get Johnny Hungy and Pac doing good things at the end of the match uh, before Jungle Boy takes down Pac but it's Phoenix who wins the match for Death Triangle a fantastic final four yeah like the, the final four was like a little match of its own yeah it's great and then we get Ryu Mizunami versus Shida for the title I didn't know what to expect in this match but it wasn't comedy wrestling but that's what we got from Ryu, uh, Ryu Mizunami Did remember we? this one yeah Why? she's doing all sorts of weird things like uh uh, well, I haven't written anything down here, but she's doing all these like weird little mannerisms in the ring, going like, oh, fair and then, yeah, yeah. Uh, she gets the desperate win in the end after a big ding dong battle. Um, the, her partner leg dropped from the top rope, looks to have it, but she kicks out. She obviously was doing some serious things in this match, but I remember thinking, oh, this is a big, you know, women's title match. This and she what was like doing? playing this silly bollocks. This is your the Martina McCutcheon yeah. spot. This is your moment, the perfect moment to win mm. the title. Then we got Miro and Kip versus Beth, best friends in a silly bollocks thing. Uh, Chuck was put. This is when Chuck was the, the butler, wasn't it? Oh yes. Uh, he gets put through a glass window by Miro, but carries on valiantly. Uh, Orange Cassidy gets put through a crate backstage. Cassidy makes a big comeback. But with a Superman punch down the stairs on the entranceway Chuck is forced to tap out by Miro who looked great here who's getting more serious and more serious as the weeks yeah. and the months go on because this was not a good time for any four of these men <laughs> was it? it wasn't and it, and it really pales in comparison to the uh, anarchy, arcade anarchy match mm. which thankfully sort of saved the day a bit for this angle yeah and then we get the big money match for the first quarter earnings Hangman Page <laughs> versus Matt Hardy uh, Hardy work, working the arm and the forearm to stop the buckshot Larry which yeah well, it makes sense it's good stuff uh, private part in Dark Order get involved but Hangman gets the win by using the body part Hardy had been working on or using the body part that Hardy had been working on for so long because oh, no. he's a cowboy okay with a well, metal arm I still like this because it was a filler feud, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. We needed Hangman to cool off for a little bit before coming back to win the title. And the Matt Hardy feud for the money was fine. And it had its nice little moment with a contract switcheroo. Oh, when he pretended to be drunk. In the bar, you can't yeah. can't get Hangman drunk. Just... Yes. Matt Hardy's um, and then we get the face of the revolution ladder match which is when all ego Ethan Page made his debut and did nothing. <sighs> and still does... N well, he's part of Retribution now, isn't he? As well, <laughs> they made their day for the stuff he's dying yeah. <laughs> just saying that after all out with the the, 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 the six bally club of men I can't they, they, finally happened. they watch pictures I'm videos. so excited I'm telling you man the amount of times we drop a little thing in there and know. it appears on AEW <laughs> we write AEW and six bally club of men helped win that ladder match on Sunday and that's what we always say mm -hmm. uh, but this is the match where we get Penta hitting the destroyer off the apron through a ladder bridge on Cody and of course Cody is hurt and everybody's crying but that we must keep weird. Cody on the stage and all all eyes must be on Cody instead of the action in the ring because we all care about Cody so much. But then guess what happens? What? Cody comes back. He's got, a, <laughs> he's got adrenaline going through his veins. He was in view selling for about 10 minutes. Oh, it was Weird. so distracting and yeah. so unnecessary. He was nullified all potential ending spots while he was on the ramp, I thought at least. And then we get to the end where we get Sky and Cody fighting for the ring and the shoulder comes into play. And Sky is a clever man on his way to becoming the face of the revolution. And, and you it's, know what? it's great was, when it takes place twice. I was about to say, wow, the he really did benefit from this sarcastically, but he he did win the TNT title. He did, he did kind of, I suppose. It's just the fact that both reigns went nowhere. Didn't yeah, they? No, happened twice, eh? Yeah. And then could it be John Cena? Could it be Brock Lesnar? No. 
It's Christian. <laughs> he makes his big debut. Thanks to Tony Khan for ruining that one with your big mouth. And then we get Cajun Starks taken on Sting and Darby in a massive house with a three-level thingy with a big hole in the middle, which was used at the end. We had Sting throwing up a baseball bat and Darby catching it, which is why this needs to go in the top tier because it was a cool <laughs> moment. And we get the stuff with Hook and Hobbs, sorry, Hook and Hobbs arriving to put uh, Darby through a pane of glass in a brutal moment. We get the funny stuff at the end with obviously an obvious, obvious camera cut with uh, Ricky Starks and Sting mm. doing all sorts of Canadian destroyers and whatnot on the ring. But at this point, Sting, of course, was only 61 or 62. Uh -huh. So we've got to let him off there. Uh, but it was a good match. Yeah, it was a good match. Do you prefer this or do you prefer the... Um... No, it's not as good as the Stadium Stampede. Oh, do, you prefer, stadium, yeah. do you prefer this one or do you prefer the one with Sammy and Matt Hardy in the a compound? They're both different, aren't they? Because Sammy and Matt Hardy was a big silly thing, whereas this one was like in black and white, wasn't it? Meant to be very serious. Yeah, I guess you can't really compare yeah, it. Yeah, it was all scathing. Um, but then we get in the main event of this match. Oh, dear. Uh, exploding barbed wire death oh. match. Omega and Moxley. <laughs> it's all going so well. So very well. It, was, it couldn't be going any better uh, until we get to the bit where Eddie Kingston comes out and then we get the siren. Could he escape the siren? No, he couldn't. And then we get the little piddly explosion and then Eddie Kingston dying in the midst of something that shouldn't really kill him. But then he brought it back after the show well. because he mentioned that the fact he passed out because he was expected to be blown up, as you probably would if you were put in that situation. So good on Eddie Kingston. What a guy. But yeah, it was all good. The exploding ropes were good. We had sort of the, the barbed wire bat with the explosives oh, in. The match was... The ma no one remembers how good the match was. It's it that was Vince, great. Vince, but man caught in it. Like, no, no, it's the last thing you see that you always remember, and that was definitely the case here. Yeah. So I was obviously, I was obviously joking about this match going in. The, uh, sorry, this event going in the top tier because we can't put it there because that finish, can we? Is it just bearable or is it slightly better than bearable? I would say the big money match was okay. The Christian reveal I thought was ruined by Tony Khan by putting like too you know, much expectation. Yeah, on too it. much yeah. expectation on it. Sting and uh, Sting and uh, Derby's match was good. Um, the exploding bar boy. I think it's oh, it's up to you. I think Mac it's, was there. <laughs> I'm gonna. I don't think it's as bad as All Out and All Out's unbearable. Yeah. So we'll I might put it, put it at there. the top. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're moving on in 2021 to Double or Nothing 2021, which was the first show back with fans. That match, which one? It was D versus Rio in the buy-in. Whoa. Just oh, the difference, yes. the difference fans make. And then, of course, after that match, which, of course, was really good stuff because of the two people involved, really good wrestles. Uh, we have Brian Cage, who doesn't want Team Taz's help versus Hangman Page. Uh, lots of stolen finishes in this match uh, with Hook and Stocks coming down to give Cage the FTW title. Mm. But he doesn't want it, does he? He doesn't want it. But then this leads to a bookshop, which gives Page the win. Yeah. So Brian Cage looks like a mug. <laughs> um, any memories from that one? Um, again, just the crowd. Yeah. yeah, it was great to have bathed in sun. They were at this yeah. point. Yeah. Then we get Moxley and Kingston versus the Young the, Bucks. This was the crowd bit I remember. Yeah. Moxley and Kingston's entrance. Yeah, the oh. baby, Moxley was just throwing stuff around, wasn't he? Yeah. And he was just sort of following, going, ah, What's he yeah. like? Uh, uh, the Good Brothers are here, <laughs> but they're dealt with by Kingston. And then the Elite Hunter, Frank E. Kazarian. He allows the Bucks to use the, the cooling spirit, their, their advantage. We get an indie taker on the ramp to Moxley. Lots of super kicks. Uh, the stolen shoes playing their part, of course. Yeah. Eddie Kingston came down with. With the shoes uh, four BTE triggers though get the young bucks the win you know a what proper conclusive win over John Moxley as well not Kingston this is one where I remember feeling silly afterwards because I actually thought that the bucks would lose here oh, mm. what was I thinking <clears throat> That was a big swing. <laughs> uh, we would expect them to, wouldn't you, against those two? Mm, but then I look back and I think there's no way the books would have lost that at that point. Mm -hmm. But at the time, it wasn't so obvious, I guess. They were on fire, though, Kings and the Moxley. They were. Especially they were. after the barbed wire death match. cutting promos around Moxley's garden, sitting there with a few cans and the barbecue, and oh, I. Casino Battle Royale we're going to now with Paul White on commentary. Paul oh, White on the night, Paul okay. White. Uh, Leo Rush is the Joker. I'm sure that's happened more than once, hasn't it? Has it? Feels like it has, but I don't know if it actually has. <laughs> but he's eliminated by Matt Hardy after a few minutes. <laughs> Christian and Jungle Boy have a ding-dong battle in the final stretch of the match. Uh, Jungle Boy swings around the ring post to keep himself in there, and then Jungle Boy eventually gets the win over Christian, and then Christian holds it against him for nearly a year yeah. and a half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then we get... Ant oh, God. Then we get Anthony Agogo versus the saviour of... Well, the, the ender of racism, we'll call him, Cody Rhodes, in the build of this match, which, of course, had the, the painful way in and then the promo. It wasn't good. I'm, I'm glad I that Cody think himself... just make up a number when he was yeah. weighing him in. I'm glad that Cody himself has acknowledged that he missed the mark on the build of this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. And I think he missed the mark in this match as well because a go-go I thought was looking really good. He was doing big frog splashes off the mm. top, rope, uh, top rope. sorry. But then Cody 
hits a vertebrake and wins. Where's Agogo been since? I mean, he's been dark in the and dark elevation. But progress. What? How can he have a match with Cody and look good? And then they're not capitalising on that. It's a mm. former Olympian, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Well, not it's much strange. Right, was it? uh, then we get the TNT champion Miro versus Lance Archer. Uh, Miro goes through a table at ringside. Archer is thrown into the crowd. Miro launches Jake the Snake's sack up the rampway. <laughs> there wasn't a snake in there, don't worry, hopefully. Uh, we didn't see the snake, but yeah, there we go. Uh, we get a big kick. Is a sack. <laughs> so we get a big kick. It's got all his belongings in. Uh, yeah. uh, it's a big kick and a game over for the win for Miro. Mm. A pretty straightforward win, but we're building into Miro as, as God's favourite champion at this point, yeah. of course. And then we get Sheeta versus Baker for the DMD's women's title. Uh, Rebels at ringside doing Rebel things before Rebel hits Baker with the crutch by mistake for a near fall. Then we get the stuff with the ref trying to jack Rebel, which allows Baker to hit Sheeta with the title. Then it curbs something on the head for a near fall of her own. Lots of kick outs Lots in this of. one. And then as a lock jaw eventually gets the win for the new uh, he, sorry that was Baker's big win wasn't it I've just said the wrong thing at the start there Sheeta was the champion this uh, is Baker's big win with her family in the front row fair enough and lots of people chanting just cheering her I mean it was the start of her very good reign to be fair yeah Let me get for Ethan. a while and then it tailed off at the end yeah there. It did tail off, didn't it? Yeah. It's just tailing off at the moment as well. I know. How is she going to come out on top of this feud with, with Jamie Hayter? She's not, but maybe her stock will rise as a result of an excellent feud. She's by lots of good wrestling. Mm. Then we get Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky versus Sting and Darby Allen in Sting's first match back in front of a crowd since TNA. I assume. Did I think rest? so. Yeah. It was oh, no, a WWE. shock. How... Yeah, WWE. Seth probably. Rollins. It was a shock how good this was. Yeah, Sting jumping off the Derby's, uh, the Derby's, the Daily's Place rampway mm. onto the floor. Then we got Derby thrown into the first row by Page because they love doing that spot. Those mental men. Then we get a lovely submission spot from Page and Derby, both locked uh, them in, and they're just sort of gouging each other's eyes and whatnot, just while they're both doing yeah. submissions to one another. Uh, Sting, uh, Sting does a scorpion death drop on Sky for a crowd pleasing victory. Yes, great. Really Raised good. beef is brilliant. And then we get Kenny Omega defending his title against Pac and Orange Cassidy lovely three way lots of combos there was a couple of moments where it looked like Orange Cassidy who was being really healy but because it's him and against the guys he was against yeah. he was being a baby face just trying yeah. to sneak a painful victory like a little cheeky little chap that he is yeah. uh, we get Don pulling the ref out which is the big one where it looked like Cassidy was going to get the three count. Uh, a brutalizer on Orange, which then forces Kenny to twat Bryce Ramsberg, just so he doesn't like count the fall. Um, and then we get Kenny hitting anything that moves with title belts. Aubrey comes down as Orange has Kenny pinned, but then Kenny reverses it into a little crucifix to steal one and retain a great match. Well put together. It was a great match, but my only negative about it is that everyone knew Kenny was going to retain. It wasn't the most convincing one. But because we're still on the right. build of a hangman thing of here, course. but that's yeah, it's the right thing to do, wasn't it? I guess at the time, but yeah. both Pac and Orange Cassidy had their moments. Then we get Mark Henry's AEW debut, woo! And it's time for the main event, yeah, yeah. Uh, he wasn't <laughs> JR, <there>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was revealed as his debut, and of course, the new analyst for the hit new show. Rampage. Mm. I said hit new show there, <laughs> not a swear word, which maybe describes it a bit better. <laughs> uh, then we get the Inner Circle versus the Pinnacle in the second stadium stampede match. If the Pinnacle lose, they must disband forever. Not as good as the first one, no. was it? Mm. The entrances at the start were fantastic mm. because we've got the limo on the football pitch for one team, then we had the Pinnacle abseiling down the Tron, mm. which looked absolutely terrifying. Uh, hot coffee in Jericho's face by MJF. These two would obviously wrestle all the way through. They had the American football coaches yeah. for those Jacksonville Jaguars mm. uh, having their little moment there then they got to the boardroom there was a staple that wasn't there there was all sorts of stuff going on between those two and the American uh, so I've said that right uh, we had the Daggers of Ice do you remember this one? It's not a tag team name. It's Wardlow and Sean Spears had daggers of oh, ice. Oh, wow. They were going to stab each other, weren't they? Very good. Now we get Sean Spears on Broadway. <laughs> yeah. In his little, his little chair room, beautifully <laughs> lit with purple light, I think it was. That's great. Uh, MGF uh, hits a cutout of Tony Khan's dad. A little bit of foreshadowing there. Uh, back in the ring, and Sammy brings it home after hitting Sean Spears with a golf cart and surviving a chair assault before doing a 6.30 sent on for the win. And that is the end of Double or Nothing 2021. Hmm. It's a real mixed bag, this one. Da Deep versus Riho, good wrestling. Brian Cage versus Hangman, I think that was all about the crowd. Mox and Kingston versus the Bucks, 
Great. was good. Had everything. Uh, then we get the Casino Battle Royal. Leo, uh, nothing much there. I guess Jungle, Jungle Boy, Boy yeah. yeah. Yeah, they did a good stuff. Uh, Cody versus a Go-Go. was no. an okay match, but the wrong guy won, yeah. I thought. Uh, Miro was a pretty straightforward win for him against uh, Lance Archer. Sheeta versus Britt Baker. Good crowd-popping win mm. for Baker. Uh, then we get to Ethan Page. Uh, well, Sting and Darby Allen's crowd-pleasing yeah. win. I think this is more just putting smiles on people's faces, wasn't it? Okay. Well, it was, so a, light, the, it was the, light, a light paper. Like, like, yeah. ooh. Triple threat match for the title. Then of course the stadium stampede. I'll uh, I'll go in lovely then, but I'm not going to put it too high up in lovely. Just, I'll, I'll go, go with that. Yeah. All out 2021. Is this the best pay per view in AEW history? Potentially. Possibly. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Ten man tag in the buy in. Hey Chefo, those halcyon days and the best yeah. friends and other baby faces. Big silly submission chain we see here, which isn't very commonplace in places like AEW. Uh, Spanish fly from Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus off the shoulders of the dinosaur before Jungle Boy picks up the win. And this was to set up Jack Evans. Losing his hair in the midst of a post match oh, yes. beatdown. Remember those days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eddie Kingston versus Miro for the TNT title. Redeemed these nuts. Yeah. One man told the other, but Miro dominates. Eddie fights back and gives it his all. Lots of big moves early on that looked like it was going to end it early, but then it turns into a right ding dong battle. Miro's neck of sand was the story here, of mm. course, not his nuts, um, because it was, you know, he's speaking to God at this point. And the T is the big finish here with the DDT which obviously he kicked out of and then Bryce Ramsberg if that's his real bloody name he turns into the biggest eel in AEW history because he gets that turnbuckle out the ring while Eddie has Miro pinned then he misses that then he's trying to put the turnbuckle back on and then he he, he, he can't get out the way so Eddie can't use the exposed turnbuckle which allows Miro of course to hit a low blow and then pick up the win so, great opener though well opener of the main card yeah, yeah. Nope, yours Bryce uh, then we get Kojima the bread man versus John Moxley, they do. Uh, Moxley really did his best to like sell everything really, really well here. <laughs> Loads of chops. Yes. I'm yes, bread. he does. Yeah. Um, because well, um, yeah. obviously he's an older fella, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, so it wasn't going to be the best match, but yeah, a bulldog choke and two paradigm shifts later for a pretty straightforward win for Moxley, even though he tried to make his his pal look as good as he could. Yeah. And then we get the uh, was this the debut of Minoru Suzuki? Yes, I think it was. Because um, this was the show where everyone debuted. Yeah. yeah. And this was the show, uh, well, when Jim Ross speaks over there. Uh, Kaze Uh Yeah. Kaze <laughs> um, There we go. I can't do it in my head to get the right thing. Kaze Do you want to do a little step through the tail somehow? Just in time with it. Kaze Oh, lovely. But it's um, JR, JR, JR. He's a mean man. <laughs> he weighs 290 pounds. <laughs> Maybe too much. He's a slender man. I was harsh on me. Anyway, Statlander versus Baker in the match next up. Then we have even contest here. Uh, lots of reversal. Uh, Orange Cassidy is being this proper baby face cheerleader for Chris Statlander. Yeah. And it's very, very weird. They were cute. It was cool. Yeah, yeah, go little, on. You can tease them. Oh, they're getting on well, those two. Uh, Bridge Baker does the Panama Sunrise in this match. <laughs> oh, oh, I wonder. <laughs> Know why? Uh, but Chris Statlander kicks out at two, so we buried that move. <laughs> buried him before he's even there. <laughs> uh, Britt Baker, of course, goes on to win this match. Then we get the Lucha Bros versus Young Bucks with their. Because I remember picking the Young Bucks here, thinking surely they can't lose their titles before Kenny loses his. Yeah. So it's all, sort of, you know, take the sheen off, maybe. Mm. But no, the Lucha Bros get their big special entrance with Mikey Ruckus singing live it was and all a great these. Entrance. Oh, fantastic. Is this when you realised you weren't going to get that? Oh, pick I realised I don't effed up at this point. And then lots of use of the cage, of course, the stuff with the sneakers, with the, th- the thumbtacks in the mm. bottom. Uh, Phoenix with a big cross body off the top of the cage just a brilliant match I don't know why else you say there um, and of course Lucha Bros go on and win yeah. anything to say about that no, match no celebrated with their kids I think did they M- might be in this match Penda had it I think Penda's kids were in the crowd or something oh. it was nice it was really I nice. can't remember that one sure. uh, then we get MJ uh, sorry the Casino Battle Royal where the winner faces Britt Baker for her title uh, Ruby 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 Soho yeah. there's another match where I realised that effed up against little cowboy Dingle Andrew because he picked Ruby Soho oh. who was the Joker for a surprise debut I picked Thunder Rosa because it looked like the story that, that's right. where I was going and it was those two right at the end a proper thrilling uh, final conclusion with those two there uh, Ty Mello I've written down here didn't cover herself in too much glory because she's still in the apron during an over the top elimination match oh I've still been calling her Conti in like every video I've done this week it's only a, I think it's only should be, should be married okay that's alright uh, maybe, maybe I'll be forgiven for that I've just realised when you said that there I'm like oh no oh yeah she's got a different name now yeah. Sammy Mello <laughs> uh, but yeah um, 
Ruby Soho gets the big win there mm. and then it's a shame that things haven't really happened it is it is she should have won the Owen the Owen Hall she should have yes then we get MJF and Jericho and if Jericho loses he has to retire which of course telegraphs the result of this one the feud was over and this was a mere consolation goal for Jericho but it's because it's him he gets to win the entire oh, feud I, I guess this match had never happened yeah yeah. Uh, might M be the only weak thing on this show mm, potentially MJF does a big heat seeker on the apron uh, Jericho doing the Owen uh, Kevin Owens powerbomb excuse mm -hmm. me on the apron uh, the spot with Aubrey not seeing Jericho's foot on the ropes uh, when she's doing the three uh, some angles he looks a bit late so that's a bit up in the air and uh, the match restarted and then Jericho wins with the walls of Jericho we then move on to CM Punk's first match in seven oh. years I think it was wasn't it uh, oh my it's weird it's weird we're looking back on hindsight yeah the cancer the poison going through AEW at the moment CM Punk is he I don't know this is coming out we're doing this this is the 7th of September and I don't know when this video comes out but from what we've heard so far, it sounds like Punk's been a bit of a naughty boy. Everything could change. Oh, Sam's going to tell me off. I've just had a swig of water and that'll the green screen. Oh. oh, no. He just took a drink out of nothing there. <laughs> See through, isn't it? But that dude, this is CM Punk and Darby Allen, of course, and Punk's first match back for seven years. And he's wearing long tights, by God. Yeah. They're doing the Bret Hart versus one, two, three kid mm. impersonation. Punk in the early stages proven he can still wrestle. Then Darby gets to do his normal big, massive bumps. Uh, a nice spot with Darby doing the Cena Money in the Bank 2011 thing with the GTS, but falling through the ropes to the floor. Mm. And then, of course, Punk eventually wins with the GTS. I think it was the perfect. Perfect re-debut uh, match for Punk. Oh, I was so hyped. Yeah. I thought I thought the, the golden era was coming of wrestling. I the mean, new it, golden the era. golden era continued straight after this match because we've got QT Marshall versus Paul White. Yeah. I, I Again, like Sean Spears versus Dustin Rhodes. It's, it was all right for what it was. Squash match with Chops mm. and the factory getting thrown around and then obviously Paul White wins. Then we get Kenny Omega versus Christian. Who would, I remember you and Matthew mocking me for suggesting that Christian oh. could take the Impact title off Kenny just before this baby. I don't remember that at all, oh, no. It kept me awake for <laughs> numerous nights, let me tell you. Uh, but yeah, this was the match which ended with the Avalanche One-Winged Angel. Oh. Remember that one? Yeah. Uh, Christian was going for an Avalanche, Avalanche, Avalanche kill switch, but it got reversed and that allowed Omega to do his own uh, Avalanche win. Gallows and Anderson were needed for Kenny Omega to topple Christian. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember being worried about this main event going in because it was meant to be Hangman, but then he got injured. Injured, I think. Ooh. Oh no, he just had a kid. Ah yes. And uh, so they delayed it until full gear, and I thought, oh, is this going to be any good as an ending to the show? Well, how silly I was oh, in hindsight. Oh yes, in hindsight, yeah. But this the, the, the match itself was good as well. Yeah, they, won, they did a good thing in sort of teasing the same way that Christian won the Impact title a few days before. Mm. Teasing it here, but obviously Omega went on to win, and then he's cutting a promo saying nobody's on my level. Everybody who was as good as me is either retired or they're dead. Talks blah, like blah, a nerd, blah. doesn't he? Yeah. Nerd, big nerd. Talks yeah. like a big nerd. Or mm. they're already dead. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go off. And Adam Cole, bye bye, appears. And then su super kicks Jungle Boy to do it. It's a little oh. bit of a swerve because people sort of thought, is he coming after Omega? No, he's joining the elite to make them the super elite. Yeah, but, but then. But then, Ross. Mm. Just as Kenny Omega's about to say, I bid you adieu. Doing all those sort of things. Brian Danielson comes out. Yeah. And we all lose our bananas. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I saw a lot of people this week saying they thought that was a lady who sung that. I never thought that. No, you mean either. However, I didn't realise he looked like such an F boy. <laughs> <laughs> Did he have to have his top off? He had a good body in that, but did he have to have his top off? If I looked like that, I would have my shirt Just off. I thought he looked like you know, the caddy from Happy Gilmore when he grows up. <laughs> yeah. Grows up, yeah. Um, is, uh, do you know what? I was watching it, right? Fraser knew all the words. <laughs> I don't know the words to that song. I know Born for Greatness. Yeah. Greatness! Greatness! Yeah. I was born for no, Fraser did it. And you can you, you probably can picture the way Fraser was singing. I don't know the words. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fraser's yeah, here and all this just outside the studio. <laughs> yeah. Barging here and batter us in a minute. Yeah. Uh, but that's one of the best shows in AW history. It depends if it's better than Revolution 2020. I'm going to give it... I'm going to shade it, yeah. I'm going to say it just about is. Although, well, we'll do that at the end, actually. Oh, we'll do it. Well, oh, I'm sorry. forgetting your own gimmick here. Yeah. Uh, then we get to... Oh, my God, what's the next show? Full Gear 2021. Uh, we get Dante, Martin, Teasing, Joining, Team Taz. Why am I speaking with 
gaps in the middle. I've got no idea. Uh, on the Bayern, but he doesn't. He, he beats up the acclaimed, uh, yeah. the acclaimed instead when they were still heels, of course. Yeah. Then we get Nyla and Jamie Hayter versus Shida and Thunder Rosa. Uh, Shida is too preoccupied with Serena Deeb at ringside, but then eventually gets the win and fall against Rose. Okay. Well done, Shida. Good job. Then we get MJF versus Derby in an excellent professional wrestling match, which was all about MJF winning with a headlock takeover. Oh, that's what he said he was going I, to do. I totally couldn't. I, I, I'd forgotten about this match. What a match. Yeah. What a match it was, yes. MJF selling the knee for most of the match and then because he was doing backbreakers and oh, stuff no, by himself. Ross. Do you remember about an hour ago in this video when I said I read an argument about Jim Cornette saying that why did MJF sell the knee when he's the baby? Oh. That was this match. That wasn't that wasn't the one against Jungle Boy. We're the alive, one, pal. The one against Jungle Boy was just really amateur wrestling, wasn't it? This one was more... Oh, my knee, yeah. Oh. oh, the comments have already got you, by the way. I really have, yeah, oh, yeah. man. If you want to delete your comment, <laughs> don't because we need the interaction. Yeah. Uh, then we get, so he's on the knee. See, Jack was wrong, but the video is still really good. Yeah. yeah. Go on. And then we get the, the, the tombstone on the apron from MJF. Of course, he's hurting his knee a little bit more. Skateboard shenanigans take place, Whoa. and Darby is, ha is, is handing one back to the ref, which allows MJF to use the Dynamite Diamond Ring to sort of knock him silly. And then he does the headlock takeover mm. for the win. What a prick, eh? Yeah. Then we get the Lucha Bros, who, of course, the tag team champions now defending against FTR in a heated brawl. Uh, Lucha Bros doing a tag inside the ring which they love oh, doing no. for some reason. Uh, Phoenix, of course, once again starts taking the piss, though. Lots of submission sequences in this match, going back and watching it. Uh, FTR, of course, trying to take the mask off of Penta, because Penta loves that. Yeah, he does now. You mentioned it in an earlier show we talked about on this video, and I remember thinking, he does that all the time, and then I thought, no, back then, that would have been a big surprise. Everyone would have gone, whoa, yeah. not now. I think this card itself took place around the anniversary of the death of Eddie Guerrero so this match especially had lots of Eddie Guerrero tributes ah. from both sides and obviously more so from the Luchas because that's what Eddie Guerrero did the yeah. old Lucha stuff uh, Phoenix was uh, kicking out of everything uh, before FTR tried to do twin magic with the Super Rana's mask remember this? yes but it didn't work well it did work but the referee looked stupid because Cash and Dax look really different in the body don't they? yeah they do people pointed that out actually yeah, yeah. Cash has got a massive tattoo, a few more muscles. Cash is a thick boy. Yeah. yeah. Yum, yum, yum. Scrummy, scrum, scrum. Uh, shocked to hear that Rick Knox was the referee for this match. <laughs> he's terrible. Uh, in kayfabe, they always make him look like an idiot, I think. Yeah, then he's we... the bad one. That's his character. Yeah. yeah. Then the Luchas get the win with Cash, the wrong man, getting pinned with a set of future things. You can see why they did that, yeah. to keep FTR relatively strong, I guess. Then we get Miro versus Danielson with the winner becoming the number one contender. A ding-dong battle with Brian getting out of the game over somehow Miro getting out of the label lock somehow uh, strike exchanges both go for the uh, to the top where Danielson reverses it to hit an avalanche DB DDT on that neck of sand and lock in a choke mm. to pass out Miro yeah Big really match. good, really good Big match. win. Yeah. Super Clique versus Jungle Men and Christian. A uh, big silly thing this was. We had trash cans, we had tables, we had Christian diving off the entranceway in the crowd, like up the, oh. up the side. Uh, we had the thumbtacks bit in Jungle Boy's mouth and then getting kicked. Oh, yeah. Uh, Matt jumping off the entranceway. We had the thumbtack knee pads by the Young Bucks in this match. Then, of course, we had Luchasaurus. Was it a shooting star press he did? I think off, it was. Off the stage. Which looks terrifying because he's so tall. Yeah, uh, long boy. Um, then we had Jungle Boy with the concerto of Matt Jackson. Jackson. Oh, this is when he became a man. This is when he, he got his jack back. Oh, he did. <laughs> to the, the, the sheer cock of Jim Ross. He was yeah. going metal, so he was. This is a really good thing. Uh, and then we get uh, Cody and Pac versus Malachi Black and Andrade. Which is we're in, we're deep in the Cody verse now because yeah. Cody was he was teasing turn and heel but he wasn't in this match he was doing a similar thing he was sort of tagging Pac on the back just getting himself in the match when people wanted to see why Pac do good just, wrestling why didn't he just turn heel because he was working us marks yeah. wasn't he? Uh, Cody teases the pedigree then the heels argue who should be the who should be the legal man Pac then gets the win over Andrade so. Up oh, yours, Cody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then we get Tay Conti, but you know Tay Mello now. But back then she was Tay Conti. Uh, Taking take on Britt Baker in Tay's best match so far at yeah. this point. Uh, Gotch style pile, pile driver from Tay for two count. Then we get Tay avoiding the log joy really well. Tay attacking everyone but Britt, and then she gets more near falls as well. But then just basically Britt just comes back and wins like she always did at this point. Yeah, but it was still promising for Tay. I think at some point, maybe the next one, she'll have another match that I was a fan of as well. Mm. But we'll get to that. Yeah, Britt one with a roll up there just sort of uh, I think the story was her escape in the match wasn't it against yeah, someone yeah, who yeah. was a shoot judo fighter yeah. way back in the day then we get Eddie Kingston versus CM Punk where Punk of course became what Jack the the the, the Harlem Globetrotters 
Oh, the New York Yankees. Yeah, the Yankees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Classic mistake there. On me, 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 the year review we did of CM Punk's yeah. first year in AEW, which ended at the end of August, crucially. I can't it believe... It doesn't take into account anything that no. happened in September. No. 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 End of, I think it was the 22nd of August oh. was the year one review. End this, date. This match was really good. It was really good. Mm. Uh, a massive brawl. Swearing. Fast paced brawl. Brawling, swearing. swearing. Uh, Punk was busted open and Eddie puts the blood on his face and oh, he loves that sort of stuff, doesn't he? Uh, Punk doing four of the five moves of Doom to hammer home the point that he's become the John Cena and Eddie Kingston is the CM Punk, but of course, uh, Eddie reverses it before the old woo boo boo. Mm. And then five knuckle, sh- no, five knuckle shuffle. Uh, Punk with two GDSs for the win. Uh, Punk made Eddie Kingston like a star with his selling, but then they go for the handshake at the end and Eddie ignores the request. And I, I don't think that was a heel move. Because no. the way Punk was going in for the handshake was not very sporting at all. He was going, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. Really good match, though. This is when Punk was still good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Punk is still good. I've, I've gone right off of me. Have you gone off of me at, at all? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Well, that means more than me, because you watched that Ring of Honor video we did. Or you did. Way. He makes you emotional speaking about wrestling. He makes me emotional. Ah, you can hear it at the end, a little crackle in your voice. Oh, my goodness, me. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'd also recorded, like, three voices. Like, <laughs> um... <sighs> I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I might have gone off him a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It's not too bad. I mean, it depends oh, we'll what we've what happens, this, yeah. this third party investigation is where Satya hasn't even started yet, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, uh, then we get the, oh, sit down, everybody. Class is in session. It's a Minneapolis, Minneapolis oh, history no. lesson oh. uh, in the in the form of a street fight with lots of tags between the uh, inner circle and American top team. Junior DeSantos, the MMA man, doing standing moonsaults. Dan Lambert beating down Chris Jericho. Then we get a massive silly brawl. We get the prince sign as a weapon because of what? Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Uh, then we get the Santos taking a double suplex off the top. We get Baron Von Raschke in the front row. Oh, yes. Uh, doing uh, the court to Ethan Page. Uh, Dan Lambert, as Matthew likes to call him, gets the stapler to his bollocks. And then we have Jericho and Eddie... Uh, uh, Je- sorry, Jericho doing the Eddie Guerrero frog splash for the on Lambert for the win. And it was fine. Mm. It was all right. But this was already a long enough show. Yeah. yeah. It was going to get longer because Tony... Car- sorry, Tony Schiavone introduces AEW debutante uh, Jay Lethal. Something just buzzed there. I think that was phone, my phone, yeah. I've probably got an email. Oh, he does him just Jay Lethal, who's babyface at this point. He is. And he gets an immediate title shot at Sammy Guevara's TNT title. Yes. And then we get to the fire. Oh, God. The long and winding road. Gareth Gates and Will Young. This is what they sang about here. Hangman Page versus Kenny Omega for the title. And the cowboy finally does it. Yes. Uh, Hangman was hanging in there after a Tiger Drive 98. And he fights back with a dick in the ass. That was a WCPW reference oh, the song, that the should song. not have been yeah, made. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he just fights back without any sort of things in his ass yeah. other than fire. Um, lots of... Uh, if a theme tune back then yeah. sounded like that was the lyrics. It was, not, it was nothing worse than that. The yeah, it's fine. Fine. Uh, lots of one man trying to do the other man's move, but because the other man does that move, he blocked it. Lots of that sort of stuff. And then we get to the, uh, the sort of... Uh, just near, near falls, uh, Aubrey uh, sprinting out to replace a, a stricken referee yeah. I'm flagging now uh, for a near fall for Page where it looked like it was over then Kenny takes control fights back before the Bucks come down to make it all about them they've got to stand and watch and Matt Jackson me. needs to give Hangman the approval yeah you go ahead Hangman I'm and not, finish this match that annoyed me especially because I felt like only a handful of people shared that view yeah. you being one of them but I remember people going like oh it's so good and I was like no oh, let man. him have that moment Hangman doesn't need Matt Jackson's approval well, to do a book shot Larry and a man he doesn't like for goodness sake Uh, uh, Kenny kicks out of a one winged angel by Hangman but then we get two book shots for the win one to the front other to the back and then oh just it it didn't ruin it but it was sort of like oh it's like finding a hair in your soup do you know what the bit though that redeemed it for me is the celebration with the Dark Order afterwards and they hold him a beer and he goes Oh, big hug instead. Comic book oh. instead. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's up there, it's isn't, up there, it? isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Still embarrassed that you thought I was crying during the voiceover about Sam. You just get, 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 get a bit emotional. That didn't. Yeah. That didn't. Just what? speak about your, the no, punk's effect on you. I'm embarrassed now. Oh, Don't be real men cry. <laughs> That's what I've learned from Eddie Kingston and the people ah, like fantastic. Roy Keane. Always crying. Uh, Revolution 2022. We're mercifully on to this year. Layla Hirsch. 
<laughs> ah, she was good. Do you remember her? Well, I remember she should have been a baby face in this feud. Yeah, people don't like you because you're adopted, Layla Hirsch. <laughs> Blah, <laughs> take that one. I'm glad they left you in that orphanage. Yeah, yeah. Chris, Statl Chris Statlander said those words, and this was the kickoff show match here. Layla Hirsch cheered, and Chris Statlander went, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> this is when Layla uses uses the turnbuckle to cheat mm. and win, but that doesn't matter because, of course, St Statler was like, ha, ha, you're adopted. Uh, then we had Tony, who has an interview with the recently departed, of course, after losing the big title match at the previous pay-per-view. Kenny Omega oh, was Don Callis, wasn't it? Was he had the music, he had everything. A great little tease that Kenny was coming back soon with uh, Don Callis saying the hangman will be a great transitional champion, oh. which I don't think was supposed to age like oh, it did, no. but it did. Uh. Uh, then we get Hook versus QT Marshall. QT getting the best of Hook for the first time ever in his life before Hook obviously comes back and wins. Then we get yeah. the House of Black versus Eric Redbeard, Pac and Penta Oscuro in a match where the big men did big men things the flippy men did flippy men things and the spooky men I guess is yeah. Pender a spooky man yeah he's yeah, he had a grave didn't he yeah. Alex good Woo! in his little Halloween yeah, costume fantastic God, and then we have Brody King of course finishing finishing this match by doing his finisher with the, the sort of pile driver thing on Eric Redbeard which looked terrifying for Eric yeah. Redbeard Hope yeah. he's, well, I guess it's okay. Uh, then we get Jericho versus Kingston, where Jericho is based like, ha ha, you can't do the big one, I'm a big oh. superstar. Uh, the opening Jericho, uh, the opening Jericho, the opening German, where Jericho lands on his head, oh. just sets this match off to the races straight away. Then we get Chris Jericho doing vertical suplexes to Kingston, off the apron, to the floor. Lion salts, walls of Jericho's, Kingston with the Saito suplex, and a massive backlift thing, but Jericho kicks out. Uh, Kingston kicks out the Judas effect, Woohoo! Uh, you'll never win the big one, says Chris, while winding up for another Jews effect, uh, effect by Eddie Ducks, and then two massive uh, Hurricanes. That's mm. what they're calling it, spinning back fists. And then, um, oh, and the sorry. St the stretch the str plum. It was the stretch plum, obviously. Obviously, the stretch plum. Yeah, everyone knows the stretch plum. <sighs> from all Japan um, and just to win by a submission yeah. but then Jericho doesn't shake his hand even though he promised to do so if Eddie and Kingston won it boded so well the feud until it all went wrong yeah well people got ill didn't they Jericho got ill and Kingston got injured and then they had to sort of bring in that's how the Jericho uh, Appreciation Society was born just more well this is according to Jericho on this podcast so it could be bollocks more through well, necessity than anything else Eddie Kingston since come out and said that he hated all of his matches with Chris Jericho <laughs> but I don't know how much of like maybe that's where the pinch of salt because this one I think was maybe Jericho's best AEW match this was the start of Chris Jericho getting good again hitting a, a patch of form again yeah. still here in September of 2022 we're on this run of Chris Jericho matches where they just haven't been bad they've yeah. all been either fine or mm. good um, then we get to Jurassic Express versus Red Dragon versus the Bucks with the Jurassic oh, tag oh, team oh. titles Red, Red Dragon, Dragon. Matthew, one of Matthew's favourite jokes to make. <laughs> in fact now Bobby Fish is gone How's he going to make that joke anymore? I mean, he can't, can he? Oh, He's just Kyle O'Reilly. He needs some cum back in his life, doesn't he? Needs Von Wagner. Yeah, he needs a partner. Uh, Matt accidentally, accidentally super kicks Bobby Fish, and now the friends are enemies in that classic wrestling spot, which I would set, send straight to hell if that was still a series <laughs> on this channel. I don't think you like that when it's like, it's clearly an accident, but they, they don't acknowledge it's an accident. It depends on who they are. Yeah. If it's a t regular tag team, then they should know that might happen. That's just yeah. the, the trepidations of a tag team match. Yes. Uh, Matt tries to use the titles, but the ref is blocking him from doing so. Kyle then uses it behind the ref's back for an ear fall. All about the former friends now as they're breaking up each other's stuff and doing moves to each other. The double team alley-oop. I like to call it the Jungle Boy. Yeah. I don't know. What this, is it the Jurassic Express? Is that what they call it for the, uh. the alley-oop powerbomb thing? Um, on Matt for the Jungle to retain... On the Jungle for the jungle men to retain their titles then we get the face of the revolution ladder match uh, massive men and little men we have the massive men Keith Lee Powerhouse Hobbs and Wardlow they were doing their thing then we get the smaller men I'm not saying small men relatively smaller men Christian Orange Cassidy and Ricky Stocks as Jim yeah. Ross likes to say they were doing their thing uh, the spot with uh, Powerhouse and Keith holding up the ladder mm -hmm. and Orange Cassidy skins the cat and then he gets up there but then just gets he just perishes doesn't he <laughs> Keith launches that's because that was it Keith Lee launches Orange yeah. Cassidy over the top rope and he lands on the ramp and there he dies uh, Wardlow sends the other big lads off the top on the stage doesn't he comes back down but I think he comes down too early because yeah. Dan House is now in there trying to Dan curse Howell Ricky again. and trying to curse Ricky Starks no, I didn't like that spot <laughs> yeah. it was time the, the timing went wrong uh, Yeah, Wardlow gets up there with a big old leap and then he sends uh, Starks through the, the bridge the, the ladder bridge yeah. uh, in the ring and then picks up the win uh, then we get another Tony Schiavone big new signing announcement this time it was Swerve Strickland oh. whose house Swerve <laughs> we get Jade Cargill versus Ty Conti. I liked it. Yep. Uh, with the, the pain maker face paint Ty Conti's got on here in this match. And uh, the, the Brazil colours. Yeah. 
I, think. I know it was just like the Home Alone baddie, Home Alone oh, 3. Oh, when been through the, the Brazil box, yeah. that was, Maybe the Brazil flag was against Britt Baker. Yeah, know. maybe when she was baby face, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the match where they did the big kiss because there was the event in Florida. Oh, yes. And that's what just showing yes. them what for, Die. basically. Good on them. And then we get Anna J helping Ty. Uh, Jade was hitting a sick frog splash in this match. Uh, Ty was hitting a pile driver for a near fall. Jade for the win, though, of course. Uh, but a great big bomb fest that didn't seem so, to have too much time. I, I think it's my favourite Jade Cargill match, that one. I think... All Out I know it was really 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 short but All Out 2022's Jade Cargill that was her most fluid match I thought oh, from like Athena. yeah just doing moves to each uh, other yeah it was it was yeah, like Goldberg true. and Brock Lesnar from Wrestlemania 34 <laughs> oh the three. good one 33, yeah. 33. Good, good five minute bomb fest. Uh, then we get CM Punk versus MJF with their dog, doggy collars on. Oh, Be my Valentine. This is nice. when Punk was still good. <laughs> um, it was only a few months ago. I know. But a lot's happened on it. Yeah, a lot has oh, happened. It's weird, then. isn't it? Uh, we get the cult of personality teased by MJF uh, finally after Punk did the other way around uh, previously. Uh, Excuse me, Punk has the shorts on and then angers everybody who hadn't heard of Ring of Honor with his AFI theme because we're going back to the, the Raven days and all that sort of stuff. Um, and of course, this was a few days after Tony Khan confirmed the purchasing of Ring of Honor. Mm. Uh, Punk is pissing blood here. Of course he is. Uh, submissions are traded, chains are whipped and I'm excited. Punk hits a reversal tombstone on the apron. Thumbtacks get involved. MJF is so desperate he calls on Wardlow, who of course he's been pissing off for a long time at this point. And then Wardlow's like, oh God, I want to find this ring for you, Maxwell, but I can't find it. So then MJF has to go back and fight. But then while he's fighting... Uh, Wardlow finds the ring leaves it on the apron for someone to pick up and that guy is punk for a little mm. bit of bitter well whatever just it was a good finish wasn't it yeah it was really good <laughs> it, was, it was another I think it's another one of my favourite matches in AW yeah and this was the first time punk had motioned for the title and while he was celebrating for this for this I big win I not believe it at the time yeah it yeah. felt really soon it did it did Indeed. <laughs> Keep filling time. Uh, then we get Thunder Rosa versus... Oh, well, Thunder Rosa with her new title design against Brit Baker. Was it against Brit Baker? I've written down Thunder Rosa versus Thunder Rosa here, and that clearly didn't happen, so we'll find out who it was. No, it was, it was Brit, Brit Baker, Baker yeah. A uh, nice match with these... Everyone thought the title change would happen, but then it didn't. Yeah, because yeah. it happened on Dynamite in the Cage match. Yes. Yeah. Uh, nice work from these two, because they work... I know they don't like each other behind the scenes, but I think they work really well together. Oh, they like Brent Sean. Oh, yes. Uh, Baker with a top rope air raid crash. Uh, Rosa with the tombstone. Brit stops Thunder onto the belt with the ref's back turned. Britt then taps out uh, with the ref's back turned once again. What's the ref doing in this match? I've got no idea. Uh, Thunder with the spear through the ropes on Baker. Baker with the stomp. And then when Rosa gets back in the ring, Baker wins. Yeah. Crowd is dead because it came before... Well, because of what came before, sorry, the, the dog collar match. Yeah, it was yeah, still yeah. a good match. Then we get Danielson versus Moxley because before you get together, you must bleed together. <laughs> I said that like that. Uh, stiff shots. Uh, both men are bleeding, obviously, because that's what had to happen because of what Moxley said. Mm. Uh, lots of submission transitions. Kicks to the face when both men are seated, which was a fantastic moment, I thought. Then we get Brian stomping Moxley's head. A triangle sleeper from Brian, but somehow Mox bridges out of it and then gets the three count for the, the shocking victory. And then I'm going to shoot on a member of the office here, Ross. That's not like you. <laughs> I don't have to if you don't want me to. No, go for it. It's not Fraser. Who? So Owen. No. It's always those two. So uh, it's not, it's neither of them. We're watching the event. Luke, one of the editors, is watching it on his screen. So he's a few seconds ahead, actually, of the, the one we're watching. Oh, no. And he goes, and we're just watching Moxley and Danielson push each other in the ring. And then he just goes, it's Rago. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. Why have you done that? He might just be saying it's a really, like, you know, royal blood fest. Like <laughs> yeah. the battlefields back Maybe. in the day. Um, but yes, William Regal makes his AEW debut. He comes down to the ring and he, <laughs> he slaps the went, who. He also, at one point, went, it's rancid. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Regal slaps, slaps them both, yeah. Yep, slaps them really hard and then forces them to shake hands and presumably becomes their manager. Yeah. Yeah. Luke does a great job. <laughs> It does a really good job. But he's an arse. No, he's not. He's not. It was just that night I really was sad about not the, the, the regal surprise getting ruined. <laughs> <laughs> then we get Sting and Darby and Sammy. It was Sammy. like 3am. Tensions were frayed, right? <laughs> what, did you have a go at him? No, no, no. Oh, I was going to say. See, I just internalised it for this video. <laughs> <laughs> you're, like, you're like Christian, holding a grudge for like a year yeah. and a half and then bringing it out now. Yeah. Uh, Sting and Darby and Sammy Guevara take and Andrade, Matt Hardy and oh, Isaiah Cassidy. What a ma and I wasn't a, even looking forward to it. Yeah, a massive hardcore brawl. You're Jose the assistant gets killed by Darby by doing his hench oh, he loves doing it doesn't he oh, Getting I... a... oh I'll get them Butcher and the Blade get involved in the crowd Sammy does a Spanish fly to Isaiah off the entrance tunnel through a table on the mm. stage less of that now unless you want to 
end your career soon, yeah. I assume. Um, then we get to Sting diving off something really high, sort of in the crowd, but to the arena floor through lots of tables and through Andrade. And then we get uh, the spot where Darby sort of does a, a sort of coffin drop to Matt Hardy, but he's selling the move that just happens, so yeah, he yeah. sort of misses, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, he doesn't get all of it. Well, mm. It happens in wrestling, doesn't it? And then we get Cole versus Hangman for the title. The crowd were tired by this point. The crowd this also, yeah, the crowd also much preferred Adam Cole because, of course, he's Adam Cole, and Hangman is no longer a cool alcoholic. <laughs> he's no longer chasing the belt. He's won it. Yeah, he's yeah. won it. He's got there. The chase is always better than the destination, yeah. isn't it? And uh, we get a tombstone from Page. Lots of tombstones in AEW. They must hate the Undertaker. And mm. uh, we get a Panama on the floor from Adam Cole. Red Dragon are down um, because they, they are the new Good Brothers at this point. Yeah. Another Panama on a massive knee, and Hangman still kicks out. Eventually, Hangman hits the dead eye off the apron through the table on the floor then the dark order come down which gets red dragon away wow wow um, <laughs> we get hangman does what uh, cole did to him on dynamite ti- uh, on the dynamite prior mm. by tying him up not in a kinky way in a very brutal way and it tied his hand to the rope and then super kicking him then a, a, a booed boom and buckshot lariat from page and that's how he retains yeah it was a good match but i think people were burned out by this point yeah just how much Hangman was getting booed. It was just a shame and quite yeah. indicative of his title reign to that point, I thought. Yeah. Does it... Because I was... I'm torn between Lovely and The Best for this one. I thought it was a really good show. Maybe that just knocks it just down into Lovely, Lovely, Lovely. Yeah. And... I mean, the dog collar match, great. Britt Baker and the Thunder Rose are oh, great. Oh, they're so much great on this card. I've got a top of... Around the same place as Double or Nothing, the first ever show. Harsh but fair, oh, yeah. in the words of uh, Pro Evolution Saga back in the day. Double or Nothing 2022, he got off the plane! <laughs> Just like Rachel from Friends while David Schwimmer was trying to woo her. <laughs> it's not Ross from Friends, David Schwimmer trying to woo Rachel. Who cows in? They took on Tony Nese and Mark Sterling in the buy-in oh match God, and Dan these, Housen. I thought we were nearly done with the video, but all these shows are so long. Oh, right? yes. Dan Housen eventually gets the win for his team. Everyone did their rules well. Yes. MJF versus Wardlow in a match that I firmly believe went the way it would have done anyway, even if MJF didn't do what he did. Oh, I disagree. Do you reckon? Yeah. Surely it was going for a squash wow. match. Wow. And then MJF straight into the main event. Mm. I think he would. I think it would have been kind of similar, maybe to the Cody one, except. Oh, this is just just the match itself, not where MJF is now. Just nah. the. I thought the the, the the story was Wardlow finally get I his hands he on was MJF being and just punished. But now that we've seen, sort of Tony Khan's not the best, maybe at, like disciplining the roster. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yes, 100 power bombs on MJF gives Wardlow a nice squashy win. And of course, MJF stole the spotlight from Wardlow's big victory here. So the fact he's um, yeah. alleged by allegedly people feel sorry for them, don't they? That's the news of West Side here. Yeah, karma. What goes around mm. comes around. And then we get the Young Bucks versus the Hardy Boys. And this was a weird match because it. I Jeff, hated Jeff was. this match, you know. Why? Because I looked on Twitter thinking they're botching a lot of moves. And I went on Twitter and everyone was going, this is amazing. Really? Yeah, I hate it. Jeff just I did... thought Jeff had knocked himself out halfway through. And then couldn't recover. Yeah, Jeff just didn't look right in this match here. But then it, it, it sort of made Matt wrestle a handicap match and sort of take on both yeah, young Matt bucks. Did well. Matt did very well. Uh, Jeff comes back later and misses a massive swan tom. He eats swan tom, a swan tom. Eats a, a twist of fate and a swan tom from the bucks, but he somehow kicks out. The Hardys are surviving lots of near falls, and then Jeff does a terrifying swan tom oh, onto, onto the steps yeah, yeah, yeah. that are like upturned on the floor, mm. and then Hardys win. Um, Whoa! Yeah. Yeah. I was surprised. So was I. Yeah. But they did it, and well done to them. Then we get Jade Cargill versus Anna Jay in a match that was just sort of there. They'd already there was, done that match, I think, once before. Yeah, there was no real build. Yeah. Uh, Mark Sterling brings a crutch down the ring, but Anna Jay is the one who uses it. Johnny Hungy comes down to help out Anna Jay, because this is when she's still Dark Order, not Anna Jay A S. Yeah. And then uh, she somehow gets out with Jade's finisher rather impressively. Then we get to the debut in AEW to Stokely Hathaway mm. who comes down and this distraction allows Jade to hit an avalanche jaded but then during the post-match shenanigans with Statlander and Anna Jay uh, Jade and the baddies Athena then debuts yeah to even the lots odds. of debuts at once and uh, now Stokely doesn't really have much to do with Jade no instead he's yeah. getting bought I assume by MJF which I guess we'll yeah. find out tonight at our time of recording he's got W Morrissey there he's got Ethan Page he's yeah. got someone else 
the Ass Boys, mm. Lee Moriarty. Is that it? That mm. would be it. Yeah. Tiger style. Mm. And then we get Death Triangle versus House of Black. Everyone works really well together, no matter what the combination is. Lots of match. dives, including one from Brody King. Pent is hitting a destroyer on the apron of, off, of Phoenix, off of Phoenix's back, mm. um, which is the, the differentiator there. Then we get Pac, who kicks Black in the bollocks, and it's just about to hit the red arrow when the lights come out. And then Julia's there. Bla uh, sorry, missed Black Mast. Blick, Black. Uh, uh, I know what you mean. Missed Black Mass, end of the match. Yes. <sighs> Thoughts? Really, really good. Really good. <laughs> the finish maybe like took away from the action a little bit, but it made sense in the story. We've been waiting for Julia to fully turn. Yeah. And then the Varsity Blondes were never seen or heard from ever again. Well, they were kind no, of. They, they, they had yeah. one squash, like horrible squash match loss. And then they've Do just you remember been... when the, the House of Black ambushed them by slowly running in with the lights going on and off? That was weird. <laughs> Strange one. Just rubbish, aren't we? Well, no, no, I don't want to be. Uh, Samoa Joe versus Adam Cole in the finals of the Owen. It was Joe cool. has a so arm, but uses the other arm to batter Cole, which was good. It was uh, a huge larry at one point, yeah. yeah. Cole then works the bad arm throughout. Uh, Bobby Fish is down, but that doesn't work. A short match is ended by the boom. It's quite surprisingly short, this one. This could have, I guess, because of the injuries and stuff. And I think Cole was rumoured to be injured around this time, or maybe shortly after, anyway. Yeah. So maybe that's a reason why it was cut short. But I remember thinking... That this would be one, you know, when we do our podcast, big question, what's going to be the best match on the yeah. show? I think I might have said this one. I was looking forward to this yeah. one as well. It was but, good yeah. still, but just like, the wrong time in both men's careers, yeah. isn't it? I guess. And then because of that one, I guess the telegraph, uh, the finish was telegraphed for the next match, which of course was the women's final. Even though rancid, it's rancid. <laughs> that was a horrible look impersonation. It's rancid. It's rancid. Uh, he's from down south, you see. They were playing Ruby Soho to the ring, but oh. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, after drop kick. Well, Ruby does this drop kick on the floor where she lands on her back you silly woman Go on, your back. hey okay. god must be hurting like hell uh, Ruby does a big sent on off the top for two Ruby with a long sharp shooter uh, Ruby going for a victory roll because she's never heard of Owen Hart oh his brother Brett and then of course Britt reverses it to get the win <sighs> then we get the, the nice moment with uh, Martha Hart appearing on the show nice little promo and whatnot. and then they get the title belts and the big old trophy to celebrate being worthy winners yeah I mean it was nice Martha Hart was nice to see yeah. in wrestling once again so that was fine but yeah the winners I think we'll look back and wish that certainly Ruby should have won and maybe even Samoa Joe as well I don't yeah. know. and then we get American top team with Paige Vincent taking on Sammy Ty Conti who's, I think he's still Ty Conti at that point yeah. and Frank E. Kazarian <laughs> who, who else eh oh what? is this when he stopped wearing the suit yeah, yeah. what was his catchphrase Yo, you guessed it you guessed it Frank E. Kazarian uh, face oh, this is Face heels versus heel faces. Yeah, but he didn't know what to react for anybody well, in this match. Everyone was just trying. I think Frankie was getting cheered because he hated his teammates. Yeah. So did everyone. Frankie else. hated Sammy, but yeah. was just doing it to get to American top team. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, whatever. <laughs> what I don't care about this match at all. No, there was a really good bit where. Um, I think Frankie might have super kicked Ty or something. Oh, that was very yeah, good, yeah. yeah, yeah. She saw that very well. But then, of course, this was the match. I should have it up because this is where uh, now Sammy and Frankie can... As they put it in the build-up, they can never challenge for the TNT title again. But I think in reality, it was just while Scorpio Sky was holding it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, then we get to Kyle O'Reilly versus Darby Allen added to the cart late, but it was absolutely fantastic. A uh, Darby with a horrible low pay, which goes wrong. Oh. Sort of gets like, oh, it's weird how he landed. Uh, it was just a really brutal match. Lots of a nice clash of styles, and but lots of m nice mat wrestling as well. But yeah. Kyle eventually gets the big shocking victory with a knee drop off the top rope. Then we get Serena deep challenging Thunder Rosa not very good build of this match with the promos no. and whatnot, uh, but the rest and sh sure as hell made up for that uh, <laughs> grappling submissions pinfall attempts are varied this had everything which was good to see uh, the moment where Dee was put in the figure four but then uh, Thunder sits up and starts slapping her was bad arse yeah it was uh, combination moves from Thunder Rosa now are relentless we get to the finish where she hits the fire, fire Thunder driver after a superplex for the victory. Yes, really good. Sorry, I'm trying to get to the end of the card. Yeah, uh, and, uh, maybe and this it... is the problem because that women's match should have had a huge build and everything. But as I'm tired now talking about it, maybe the crowd were also quite tired by this yeah. point in the show. I am knackered. And <laughs> uh, then we get Anarchy in the arena, which is the JAS taking on Kings Brilliant. Kingsley, uh, Kingsley, Kingston, Moxley, and their babyface friends. Yeah. Wild thing playing in the opening stages over and over again, just like New Jack back in the day. Daddy Magic is busted open horribly. Uh, uh, Garcia with the 
pile driver on Ortiz on the stairs. Jericho with the walls and the timekeeper's table, which means it hurts a lot more, but it softly collapses. But yeah. I think it's him and Moxley who are doing it on the table. Uh, what? <laughs> him and Moxley doing, doing it on the table. table. Ooh, stereo dives from Santana and Ortiz are great off the ladders in the crowd. Yes. And then we get Eddie who comes down with the petrol yes. and the blood. It's one hell of a visual, like from a horror movie. Mm. Uh, Danielson then stomps him uh, as he's dowsing Jericho. He stopped. So Eddie Kingston's dowsing Chris Jericho and petrol to set him on fire. But then Danielson's like, no, no. That's too far. <laughs> but then that sort of backfires on Danielson because then he's left in a sort of situation where it's Hager and Jericho versus Danielson mm. and then they just batter him and then we've got Hager sort of choking him with the rope while Jericho's got the half Boston crab in and then that's how he that's passes it. out for the yeah. victory. Uh, Roosh then signs in a backstage promo uh, with Andrade, obviously. He's done so much. He's taken it by storm. <sighs> he's been really good. <laughs> really good. I've been blown away. Especially, he when has he been all right. especially when he stood there all out at the top of the ramp in a match where it was the first guy to get the chip, take off all of his clothes really slowly. It's uh, called Rush. <laughs> get down to the ring now. Rush. Team Taz versus Swerve and our Glory versus the champions, the Jungle Express with the tag titles. Starks is looking, for the, he just loves Jungle Boy's mom, doesn't he? Yeah. Across the top rope in a nice moment there. Keith Lee is uh, saying Tope con hello to the rest of the field <laughs> over the top rope. Jungle Boy is getting hoofed in the face by Luchasaurus. Getting hoofed in the face by Luchasaurus, then taking. Um, maybe by accident. Yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah. Or then, was it? No, was it, yeah. It's aged like milk, maybe. Then we get. Uh, he's taking Swerve and our glorious finishes, but kicks out. Swerve then finds himself alone in the ring with both jungle men, and they do the old alley oop bomb, mm -hmm. as I like to call it, for the win. Then we get to Punk versus Hangman for the title. Jack, speak about this for a number of minutes so I can drink. Um, Punk versus Hangman for the title, which we thought was a match between two wrestlers who didn't necessarily hate each other backstage, but mm. apparently they do. It was one where I remember everyone was divided. I just realised that light's gone out. Oh, the, the no. The bulb's gone. It looked a bit dark on there. Oh, oh. That's a shame. I remember uh, everyone was divided. I remember Andrew, I think, little cowboy Andy, as you call him, thinking the hangman was going to win, and I was going, no. Naive. Oh. Naive young man. And eventually, <laughs> yeah, Punk did win, and it wasn't, a bad match, but it certainly wasn't either man's best, I will say. No, mixed reactions from the start by the crowd. Uh, Hangman selling the knee after a moonsault to the floor. P uh, Punk is going for the buckshot, but slipping. Or was it slipping? Was it selling? Oh. We don't know, but the more he does that sort of thing, the more you think he's botching. Uh, he hits a normal clothesline instead. Finishes being stolen by both men. Hangman's teasing using the belt. We're going back to Bret Hart once mm. again, but the ref puts it out of harm's way. Where did he put it? On the ring apron. Oh, I didn't know that. All right, okay. Right. <laughs> That's out, yeah, that's out of harm's way. Yeah, it's like it's like Brett and Flair with the ref down. Uh, Hangman's in turmoil. Should he use it? But no, he doesn't. It's reversed. And uh, then the buckshot gets reversed into a GTS. And that's enough for Punk. Oh, it's a, such a shame for Hangman. But there we go. Oh, I think so as well. Um, what do we do about this oh, show then? Oh, my God. Where is it? Um, oh, my days. There's so many matches now. Uh, the Bucks and Hardys was newsworthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jaden and Anna Jay, not much to write home about there, I don't think. Uh, Death Triangle versus House of Black was good, but short. Then we get the two tournament finals, not much to write about home there. I think it's... American Top Teams match. Oh, yeah, apart from the, the... I think it's all right. Yeah, I don't think all right. deserves higher than all Kyle right. and Darby was good. Thunder Rosa and Deeb was good. Yeah, they were good. Anarchy in the arena was good. Oh, that was... Does that push... Do those three matches push it yeah. into the bottom of Lovely? Team Taz and Swerve Not Glory and the Jungle Men. Yeah. Ah, okay. we'll go there. Okay. Forbidden Door. Oh. You do those names because <laughs> I'm going to make a mess of them. Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi <laughs> defeat Aaron Solo and QT Marshall. I could have done those ones. Is that the, the, the champagne fella? Should I read your notes as well? Loads Why of I... meh, but the crowd are hot. Load of meh, but the crowd are hot. And they really hate QT, who was really good at his role. Go Solo on with takes QT. the fall. Lance Archer versus Nick Comrado, and Archer nearly dies as he's entering the ring with the vault. Oh, oh yes. He lands on his head, doesn't he? Big Men Strikes, Blackout on a Massive Man in a quick back and forth affair. Swerve in Our Glory versus El Desperado and Yoshinobu Kanemaru. That's the one. Who has all of the banter. <laughs> Desperado he with, does. Desperado with the Brock Lock on the outside on Swerve. Further tension tees between Swerve and Keith during the match as the smaller kicks the big one. Risky <laughs> to the eyes by Mr. Yoshinobu and nearly gets a roll-up win on Keith. Desperado getting his feet caught in the ropes and laying there with half Stiff his as a body board. out of the ring. Allowing Swerve to hit a stomp. Keith gets the win. Big, big win. Max Castro and the Gun Club defeat Yuya Uemura, Alex Coughlin, the DKC, and Kevin Knight, the, the, the lads from the dojo. Dan Hausner has the Ass Boys theme, which makes the Ass Boys abandon their team and leaves things a handicap match, won by Caster and his mic drop, Billy Looks Hard. All the time. Yeah, he does. 
Yeah. He looked good in this match, though. Jericho, Sami, and Minoru versus Eddie Wheeler and Shooter. Shooter running wild, everybody's diving until Minoru just teases us. Shooter kicks out of a code breaker. Baseball bat through the ropes for Sami to shoot his bat. Looks like giving Jericho the advantage, but no. Shooter almost pins Jericho after some offense. Shooter then does the walls on Jericho. Shooter is then three to three to three on one. Yeah. He's isolated and it's a Judas effect to end a very entertaining match. Very, very good. The story being that Jericho had beaten him and his daughter in in New Japan. His daughter. His dad up. Beating his, him and his dad oh, up. His dad up. Beating him and him, him and his dad up. Beating, him and, beating up him and his dad. Um, Ring of Honor and IWGP tag title match. Dax Harwood is injured and helps to the back. The Great O'Conn sits on Cash Wheeler's head for a while with the camera right up O'Conn's ass and tries to make Wheeler kiss his feet. He's a weird man, mm. isn't he? Harwood's back and runs wild. Rapongi almost win, but then Rocky eats a big rig and FTR retain the ROH titles and win the Good IWGP. match, that one. Yes. Pack, I'm getting out of breath. I don't know how you've been doing this. <laughs> Pack versus Miro versus Black versus Clark Connors, who was really good and won the crowd over as the match went on. Big spear through the table on the floor. He did steal the show a little bit there. Large. Miro then just takes over, battering everyone. Miro locks in the game over on Pack, but he is misted by Malachi Black. Then we get Pack doing a 450 onto Black, who has Connors in an armbar, and then Pack puts the, bru- Pac puts the brutalizer on Connors for the win. Another good match on I this card. I thought that uh, Miro or Malachi would win that one. So did I. Pac. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad Pack won, though. Yes, so. Bullet Club versus Dudes with Attitudes. Sting with the dive off the entrance tunnel instead of doing a normal entrance. Nipples from Phantasmo. Sting does his own cripples, I think. Triple super kicks on Sting. Double Scorpion death drop from Sting, who then gets Phantasmo all alone and leaves the ring. Nick Jackson tells him to get back inside. He got a bit confused at Oh, Sting. yes. Yeah, I don't remember. He went down to the floor. Yeah. Nick was like, go back in there. Phantasmo then takes a beating from the baby faces to lose the match. Another entertaining match. Shooter gets a fireball to the face from... Oh, sorry, Jericho. From Jericho. Yeah. Long-term stories and that, and he's a wizard. <laughs> Thunder versus Tony for the title. Very technical match until Tony slaps Rosa, and then all the bombs come out from both ladies. Storm kicks out from a combo that ended with the Fire Thunder driver. Dustin Rhodes' is final reckoning for the finish, which Thank confused God the everyone. Commentators were there, yeah. Because not much had been made about Dustin being a mentor, yeah. Osprey versus Cassidy. One of oh. the matches of the year, you've said Big here. Big time. Yeah, it was of course crazy. it is. Lucha start. Osprey stretching Cassidy and reaching into his pockets only to find his own middle finger. Stunned out millionaire and <laughs> a Michinoku driver from Cassidy for a two-fall. A two-fall. Mm. I like that as a phrase. Might have been getting tired by this a point. two-fall. Aussie Open keep getting involved, so Cassidy takes them out with a dive. Lots of counters into beach break. Cassidy kicks out of two os cutters, and then after some more offense and the big old elbow to the back of the head, the hidden blade, he kicks out again. Osprey shock face. Stormbreaker then wins it for Osprey. Shibata coming down to save the best friends before beating up Osprey. Orange puts his sunglasses on Shibata, who's now since been done, done anything with that. Are they going to have a match, him and Osprey? I don't think so, but I don't know. I don't know. Wow. Claudio Castagnoli's shock debut as he replaces Danielson, who's injured against Zack Sabre Jr. Claudio did more power stuff than technical stuff to make sure the gimmick stayed between the originators of the match. Who's the best technical wrestler, mm. not the best powerful wrestler. That's a good point, actually. I never yeah. thought of it like that. He walked up the steps with Sabre on his arm and dumped him in the ring. Big swing isn't done as long as it's normally done due to the injury on the arm of Cesaro, uh, Claudio. Zack mocks Brian with the kicks, but a Ricola bomb after an uppercut wins it for Claudio. Another good match on Brilliant this card. Match. Page versus White versus Cole versus Ricardo for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. White and Cole work together in the early stages, but the baby faces get the upper hand. Then Cole hits a backstabber on his heel friend with, when they have the upper hand before be, because backstabber. Because backstabber. Yeah. Gato comes down to stop Hangman, which works before Hangman hits a dead eye on Jay White. Buckshot Larry a pinatel broken up by Okada. Then we get the finish, which was weirdly abrupt, where Cole takes an air crash and a big elbow from Okada, who then tries to do the rainmaker, but Cole just flops down. White comes in and switchblades Okada, but covers Cole. And that's it. Okay. Good heel win for White, but yeah, it was. Uh, what came out of that? I can't remember now. Cole was injured. Yeah, just caught, uh, was yeah. it just a concussion or something? Something like that, yeah, yeah. but it's kept him off for a while. I think, since then. Yeah, he's not uh, been back, has he? Yeah. Moxley versus Tanahashi. Slow start with Tanahashi working the legs, submission holds. Mox takes things outside, and Urinagi's Tana through at the timekeeper's table. Let me call him Tana, huh? Who do yeah. I think I am? Just, just his pal. <laughs> Moxley bleeds for no reason, still can't work out why. Yeah, Mox- he went down <laughs> the floor and then was bleeding and came back in the ring. And I remember this because Tanahashi just did some stomps on his head, but with flat bottom shoes. Yeah, really safe stomps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now we're moving up through the gears. As Tana does a big splash to the floor, paradigm shift for a near fall, goes for a second but fails. Little comeback for Tana, but Moxley gets the bulldog in. Massive lariat from Moxley almost ends the match before lots of elbows and a sleeper and another paradigm shift for the win. There we go. The JS come down and beat everyone up, but Claudio comes down as we head towards Burden Guards. Because that's the way AEW shows must end at oh. this time. Oh, wow. breath. Right. It's, it's top tier for it's, me. It's, one of the, it's might be the best one of all time. 
I'm going to... We'll, we'll do find it. out yeah, at the end, though. It's, definitely, the top, on it's me. definitely top tier, yeah. Yeah, big time. Now we get to Sunday's event, All Out 2022. Ruby and Ortiz versus Sammy and Ty. Are we good through all the matches? Do you want to? Yeah. We should do. We've done yeah, it for the rest, haven't yeah. we? People might be watching this in the future. Yeah. Uh, we get to, uh, Sammy... Uh, I've just said that match. Uh, like Sammy getting hit by the car, Excalibur mm. said he was getting merely clipped, was a bit funny. Uh, Ruby getting dumped on the head and then breaking the noise was terrible. And then she obviously took this massive suplex to the floor where she landed really rough as well. Mm. It was a good... Funny open a match yeah. apart from obviously what happened to Ruby in that match. Then we got Hook versus Cool Hand, mm. Angelo Parker. Um, I wouldn't want to fight Action Bronson, would you? No, he's a Richard, he's a thick, scary man. Richard uh, Richard Yannick Tubman uh, has shown me footage from uh, Action Bronson's gigs where he throws men in yeah. the crowds and whatnot. I went to an Action Bronson gig. No, you didn't. It was at a festival. How did you survive? Own, I didn't get on stage. No <laughs> one dared. No one did it. It was good though. But he was throwing water balls into the crowd, not like that. Like. Turn his whole body and then like, like bowling with, with, them with the chairman's intent, like, like Malinga, the bowler, the oh, bowler, well, yeah, yeah, proper like. Like that. Goodness me. Allegations um, of throwing. Mm. A nice uh, use of the hips from Hook in his throws and whatnot. Mm. It was all right. Popping uh, the hips. I thought Coolham would have got a bit more offence in, with, you know, than being Oh, them. I thought he got more than people normally do against him. Oh, fair enough. Mm. Thought he would have got a little bit more. Stabbed him with his neck comb thing. Mm, yeah. Then we get to Kip Sabian versus Pack with Kip Sabian's new gimmick of, of being a gothy vaude villain. All rise in the crowd over there. Oh, oh, oh. What am I going to do here with my guy liner and my box? of tricks that tells me what to do in this match and I speak to this box because I'm a crazy gothy board villain. It was weird. <laughs> and for a while, I was convinced he was going to win because he was getting the better of Pac. He was, was outsmarting Pac. Yeah. Everything Pac did, he, did, he, did he had an answer for. Just wiggled his fingers. Oh, I'm so crazy, my wiggly and fingers. I looked up at him and he just headbutted him. <laughs> I was like, oh, I, This is... I, I, I can't be guilty of like judging a gimmick after one match, but this is the sort of gimmick that super bad Kip Sabian would have laughed at. Super bad. Yeah, it was weird. But it was a very good match. I thought Kip was doing a lot more moves than we used to see him doing in AEW. I know he was a flippy twink back then, but he was an even flippier twink yeah. in this match, I thought. Um, what was I going to say here? Uh, it was against Pac, though, so maybe it's yeah. courses for courses. Uh, Pac comes out, the, oh yeah, the stuff at the end with Pac coming out the babyface tunnel for this match, mm. but then leaving through the heel tunnel he because Orange him, Cassidy. Uh, he called him a joke. Get to the back of the lane. You're not a wrestler. No. You're a joke. Then we get to the what might just be the match of the night. Potentially, Eddie Kingston versus Tomohiro Ishii. Not Chop. for everyone. Ch what? Not for everyone. Who, who didn't like this? I you. did. I liked it. Oh, was it Luke? No, I just remember... <laughs> I just remember a while ago, there was a match with, like, Yuji Nagata or someone. And they just chopped each other for the whole match. And I was like, oh, it's brilliant. And my girlfriend went, That's, is that it? I was oh. like, all oh, right, so it's not for her. Oh, it looked like he was getting taken over by the, the Night Flayer. Maybe she's more... <laughs> the Night Flayer, I've got that wrong, haven't I? From Stranger Things. Stranger Things, the season mind three. Flayer. My, mind yeah, Flayer. Well, the black, the black liar, what I mean. Yeah. Look at what you see. Uh, chops, lariats, commentary. We're laughing at how hard some of the lariats were, with, which I thought added to the oh, piece. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Eddie with his... Was that Eddie's new look by design with the longer hair? Like, because then he got suspended. I grew his hair out did, of he, did, he, did he wash while he was suspended? Maybe he's just not a shave of the head for a while. <laughs> I don't know. And his beard was a bit unruly. Uh, but I thought it was a very, very good match. Follow that, they said, main card. And the main card did. We got to the ladder match, which uh, Roosh, as we said earlier, looked like a bit of a dick. I thought while well, Utah was half with the ladder, he was going, let me take off that bit of... And then, uh, he didn't there. Uh, awkward stuff with Roosh and Andrade just setting up a ladder bridge for no reason and then going off and doing other they things. Could, either of them could have climbed that yeah. one. Uh, Claudio was doing... I didn't like the stipulation itself. I don't like it either. Well, there's, there's, I know it had all, to be all done be, for the ending, but... They all should be down there for the, yeah. the same time, shouldn't they? And then uh, Claudio was having awkward moments with the ladder with his, like, ex shaped yeah. ladder bridge but thing he, he couldn't quite lift up it, then just sort of dumped, dumped Andrade to the floor still impressive yeah really impressive Dante Martin was really impressive yeah. in this match as was Penta and Ray with their little spots we had Penta doing a Canadian destroyer on a, a ladder bridge but on the floor uh, and then uh, Ray doing this massive frog splash off the top rope mm. through a table on the floor and then of course we had the finish with Retribution coming down Malcolm Bivens does a fantastic still show me Hathaway sorry yeah oh my god NXT all the way through me uh, but he was doing a fantastic show Michaels in person with his eye, I thought it was great. More wonky eye. Oh dear me! Yeah, it was really oh, good. Goodness. And then of course we had the sympathy for the devil playing. Down he comes, the Joker looking like the masked magician from the Secrets of Magic he Revealed. Really did. Um, and he just doesn't. Then I know. 
I, I saw this happen before watching the pay-per-view back, but watching the full entrance for the, the Joker, it was clearly MJF, like the yeah, way he was moving. Yeah, yeah, probably. But I guess that was the point, wasn't it? Just sort of tease it. Well, I didn't realise at first, and I felt stupid, but I had just watched... I'd, I'd done all of Worlds Collide, and then I was, this was like the seventh or eight... This was like the 11th match of the day. I'd watched or something. Like How many hours of wrestling have we had to watch since last Friday? I'm not a... Not One for Rampage, two for matter. Smackdown, oh, five oh. for this pay-per-view from start to finish, four for... Uh, the, Worlds Collide. Well, not the other one Clash of the Castle, Clash of the Castle. three for Worlds Collide uh, probably well. work out we're up so. to 24 already or something. now we're up to 40 <laughs> uh, I, don't know. I don't know tournament's trio finals Hangman accepting Nick Jackson's low five handshake thing no 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 Hangman they're bad news for you stay with your friends that wasn't the bit that offended me but the bit where he stopped his teammates from oh, winning the man. From beating up Matt Jackson beating up cripple Matt Jackson <laughs> get it done man you got so tiled on the line I saw a tweet that was like Matt Jackson's been selling his back since Wrestle Kingdom 11 or something like that <laughs> he has it was like 2017 that's why Nick's the best one because oh. I don't like people oh, storytelling that it really? is but not when you do it at all okay, the time fair come enough. on he's got to get it to a chiropractor or something mm. he's just being negligent and then we have Rick Knox being everyone's favourite referee again he was letting everybody do everything there was a four way super kick with four people getting kicked yeah. in the head at one point everyone was doing moves around the ring no rules were being abided by but then when Hangman and Omega mm. got there he was like oh you must tag each other in dear fellows but it was good because they dragged the unconscious bodies of their partners it was the good corner. for that but it was just like after watching all that you, got, you can't just start doing the rules now I guess so Johnny Hungy was fantastic in this match the reverse out the one winged angel into the roll up had me spaffing I've written down here um, uh, uh, we had Alex Reynolds playing the club Mac role I thought oh, just holding, nice. holding things together yeah, you know blue, yeah. um, Hangman eventually got going but I thought the finish was wonderfully done by the indecisive cowboy it was he's close lined his pal and he's Kenny Omega in the books just sort of holding well the books were holding back Hungy weren't they uh, sorry holding back Hangman yeah. Hungy was getting pinned fantastic stuff follow well, that yeah guys in the back was that Kenny. a shoot comment <sighs> but I of course so. Because this is AEW, after that barn burner, out come the ladies. Uh, Jade Cargill and Athena in this one, which I thought it was Jade Cargill's. Just in terms of like doing moves and then transition it with different move I thought that was her best mm. match at this point I, it was really awkward when Athena hits her finisher what's it called now the O face the O face is that a reference to something oh wait uh, yeah and then she changed it to the eclipse yeah. for WWE and then she changed it back to the O face yeah. but she hits that and obviously it's a really protected finisher and you can see the bodies are late and Jade has to kick out if they're getting pulled out yeah. and because of that Athena Shearer's Layla Gray into the barricade and Layla Gray is not seen from again I hope she's okay <laughs> yeah. but my god it looked terrifying to yeah. take um, but yeah we had Jade doing nice moves the big boot out of midair and then into the jaded uh, Rick Knox of course again everyone being everyone's favourite referee the baddies got involved with that pull out spot yeah he just didn't get rid of them yeah it really makes no sense does it He's rubbish. He was watching it. He saw it happen. He's rubbish. Yeah. Then we get to Wardlow and FTR versus Jay Lethal and the, uh, the Motor City Machine Guns. I think they must be holding off for FTR versus the Motor City. They've got to be. Because they're barely touching this match. They did. The Motor City Machine Guns did their thing where they run and hit the ropes really fast and they're like, whoa, really precise. But it wasn't a full. It wasn't the full Motor City Machine Guns experience, Rob. No. Oh. Mm. Uh, <laughs> we get, sorry, Wardlow and... What was that about? I know it must be so the Michigan state, or something. state of Michigan is shaped like a hand. Is it? And they're pointing to Detroit. That's just you David Blaine to me. <laughs> the Shazam. It's all because of the Shazam. <laughs> Feel the match. <laughs> <laughs> uh, figure four, uh, avoided by Wardlow while Jay Lethal was trying to put it on him. Powerbomb trying to get done to Jay Lethal, but well, he was avoiding that. That was some good stuff. Uh, Wardlow had a good hot tag. Lethal kicking out the F10. Not sure about that just one. Just five, really, wasn't it? Yeah, well? and he just and, kicked out. <laughs> but then there was a nice moment at the end, obviously, with Harwood's daughter coming yeah. down. That was nice there. Starks versus Hobbs. We spoke about earlier with short matches missing the mark. This oh. was weird how short it was. I thought it made uh, how, uh, Powerhouse's uh, uh, Spinebuster look really good. It did. But for the build and the sort of time that's been right. put into this, it shouldn't have been this short. I thought. Ah, uh, I think it made Hobbs look really strong. But has, what's it done for Starks? Nothing, we'll because the, what they said on Corey was, Starks wasn't at 100%, and that's why he lost to the spine bus like he did. What was the match he had on Rampage? I can't remember. QT Marshall. Well, QT's... It was a vicious brawl at the start. Well, it was Starks kicking... It's QT kicking Marshall, QT though. Yeah, yeah. You can't have QT getting, like, you know, made like a fool sometimes and have him going, like, 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. Then we get Swerve Not Glory versus The Acclaimed. If I was, Yo, book, if I was booking this listen. promotion... I'd have called the Audible and had the acclaimed win. I it just felt right, didn't it? I understand that, but I'm looking forward tremendously to the rematch now. If they do it. Put my ass in that seat. If they do it. Scissor me, Daddy. Isn't that happening at Arthur Ashe? 
Is it? Ah, oh, surely. I hope so. It needs to happen again, and the acclaim need to win. Scissor me, daddy. The crowd were fantastic mm. in this match. They were almost as good as a British crowd, let me tell mm. you. Yeah, uh, take that one there, Chicago. Uh, Cast to do more power, uh, getting to do more wrestling, like more power moves. I thought was very impressive yes. in this match. The sort of what did it was the AA, it wasn't was it? Basically, so, an attitude. It was a Death Valley driver on Keith. Yeah, I like the fact that Bones' his body gave up on him after Swerve cut the promo and the build of the match. Saying all you do and, is uh, your body gives up on you, and Swerve took advantage of it, and so did Keith. Yeah, Keith took advantage of it as well. Keith was getting booed which I never thought would see unless no. he was a proper bona fide heel but no Anthony Burns looked good despite his body you know kayfabe giving up on him he, f he, kept, he kept fighting keep on fighting yeah keep on dancing uh, they should yeah whatever it was really really good mm. maybe Matthew, I know what we're sitting here before this week's called the Hollet Wrestling Podcast the week of the 7th of September Matthew's going to say too many kickouts isn't he no he'll have liked this surely he's going to say too many kickouts <laughs> The only one that I had a problem with was when Keith was a bit too slow to break, or one of them was too slow to break on the pinfall, yeah. slightly. Nah, oh, I think it was Really fun. good match, though. Yeah, really then we good. get the women's four-way for the interim championship. Sheena's concussion spot was weird for me. It was a bit like so my So she could come back like, whoa! Yeah, but like, you know, this is just burying the AW doctors again, uh. is it not? Like the Mahardy thing back in the day. Uh, yeah. hey, Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker, uh, sorry, Jamie Hayter and Tony Storm were the two stars in this match for me. I thought that what they were doing was really good. And they finally got there with the Britt Baker turn because it was a bit after the show where haters walking down the mm -hmm. corridor and Britt's like, Jamie, come back. And she's like, no, you shut up. You don't even talk to me. <laughs> you bitch. Um, so, she's yeah. team with Kip Sabian. <laughs> <laughs> it was so uh, fancy I really crazy. enjoyed all the storyline beats in this match. Because yeah. it, it was escalating. Because first, she stopped her from winning. Then she tried to pin her, and then she thought about doing the lockjaw as well. Yeah, uh, but she, she couldn't do it. No. Yeah. But uh, the deadlift tombstone from uh, from Jamie Hayter to Tony oh, was I great. Oh, just well. a random tombstone in the middle of it. They love a tombstone. Yeah. They hate the Undertaker. <laughs> then we get Christian Cage, who was apparently injured, versus Jungle Boy Jack Perry. Yeah. Officially, Jim Ross is like, oh my, I told you all these years. <laughs> uh, Christian's interactions with Jungle Boy's mom I thought were great. The little kiss before the yeah. finish. How strong are the genes from the mom side of Jungle Boy's family? Yeah. They all have the same hair. Yeah. Yeah. And the sister as well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Impressive manes on yeah. display. <laughs> I don't... Well, I'll obviously, let it play out, see where it's going, but yeah. I don't like the fact that the Luchasaurus. story was being told. Luchasaurus kept Christian Cage fresh for Jungle Boy coming back. Then Jungle Boy came back, and then Jungle Boy was about to get his hands on Christian Cage, and then Luchasaurus turned back on Jungle Boy. Christian's playing 5D chess. <laughs> He's at so many steps ahead of everyone else. Obviously, well, I hope it's not just a fact of money. Because you know, that's the one for Christian. Like, oh, I've been, uh, you know, I'm, I'm only five foot ten, but I'd be six foot four if I still in my bank account. Whatever. There's, there's, there's. I remember Snooker commentators saying that Ronnie O'Sullivan thinks like twenty moves ahead of. Or Christian is the Ronnie O'Sullivan of professional wrestling, and we'll have to find out how he got there soon, hopefully. Because mm. so, so far, that's a poor story for me, lads. Yeah. And, and then we get to Jericho versus Danielson. I liked the fact it was so different to anything else off, yeah. on the card, but I thought what let it down was his position on the card. Or oh, I agree. After the ladder match after the tag team title match it just felt weird having this sort of submission specialist match I technically. thought I had a, a foreboding feeling about this show and the structure of it when in the first match of the pre-show the first spot was get someone get run over by the golf cart yeah. and I was like okay oh yeah after Eddie Kingston Tomohiro well, as well yeah, yeah this was it but it was if this had like opened the main show or something it would yeah. be great but yeah uh, I like the fact Danielson was just taking the piss in uh, people do you want to entertain do you let me do some ho oh, oh, ho Mr. Whippy did a bit of Val Venus yeah, yeah. Uh, what am I saying here I thought Jericho kept up with Danielson really well as I said earlier we're in this great like stretch of really good Chris Jericho matches after a stretch of not so good Chris Jericho matches it's like when it's like when Per Murdersacker got put in the FA Cup <laughs> final after being injured for ages and he just didn't he, there was like an injury in the warm up and they were like we're going to play Murdersacker and apparently he was like man of the match in the FA Cup final there you go Chris Jericho and Per Murdersacker <laughs> per Murdersaka. they're the same thing and I like the, the way Jericho I don't like the fact that Jericho won I would just prefer just Danielson winning just because he's Danielson yeah. but I like the way it was done with the story with Garcia mm. going on at the moment um, I thought that like came back on there but it hasn't <laughs> um, but um, yeah it was good, I thought. Yeah, same. Yeah. Same. We'll have to see where it goes. This week's Dynamite is we're sat here recording. Then we get to Miro and Darby versus Sting and the maybe departing House of Black, we don't know. Uh, Malachi apparently blew a kiss after this match to the crowd and they're all hugging. Mm -hmm. He's going on Tumblr like a teenager going, has this all been worth it or has this just happened for the sake of happening? He took the pinfall as well. <laughs> he took the pinfall as well, yeah. yeah. He had a great little bit with uh, Sting, where Sting sort of kept it, like just wrestling. Sting yeah. was just keeping up with him. It was great. I thought Miro's role in this was sensational. Yeah. He wasn't scared because, you know, he 
he, he got rid of the power, got rid of the virus. Uh, I like the fact that Darby was trying to tag himself in, but Miro was like, no, no, mm. I'm Kip Sabian now. I'm going to just take <laughs> them all down at the same time. A subtext I've written down there. Yeah. yeah. And, and he wasn't celebrating with him at the end. He just looked on from the ramp. Yeah, really is, good. Is that teasing future matches or is that just because he's not really part of their team? I'd be fine with either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think matches. Yeah. Oh, imagine Miro throwing around Darby. He um, has before, I think. Did he beat him for the TNT title? Did he? Maybe. It, yeah. Maybe. It all blurs into one, doesn't it? But then we get to the main event. We get to John Moxley versus CM Punk, and I thought Moxley was brilliant here. Um, the baby face with the I don't give an F energy. Uh, Steel and <laughs> Punk's is great. Yeah. Steel and Punk's taunt in the ring as well, just yeah. flicking off and that sort of For some reason, I didn't think Moxley would be limber enough to sit cross legged so easily, but he just popped down there. Oh, there he's, he's very, a wrestler. Very yeah, lucid. He is actually, isn't he? Yeah. Always very lucid. Yeah. Uh, I like the start with the tease of an early finish after what happened in the previous match. Uh, Moxley left in the blood as I said I thought he was the, the main standout in this match here Punk was hanging on desperately you stop throwing shade at CM Punk no, Moxley was the best I thought that was the story of the match like Punk was hanging right. on then he just sort of fought back and yeah. then I like the bit with the, the two GTSs and he sort of falls back in position rather than falling through the ropes yes yeah, and he, uh, history and then, and then MJF got overshadowed in this big return by the press and conference first, afterwards and at first when that voicemail started playing in that room where me and the editors were watching, we were all like, oh. And Luke go, it's Khan. No, he didn't, he didn't. <laughs> but I like the fact that was put in there because after what MGF did with the promo and whatnot, this is it within the story, obviously. The only way he could come back was on his own terms. So like the fact that Tony, mm -hmm. that big pushover bitch that he is, uh, was shown, like, giving MGF what he wanted yeah. to the comeback made sense. But where do we put it? <sighs> I don't think it's one of the best. I think it's. I was going to say second tier as well. I think there's certain matches that should have gone long. It's weird, to, but I think there was. A, <laughs> well, should have gone mean, longer, but there was 15 I'll matches just on this it card, sort wasn't of like round like yeah, around that era, era. Like that. Area, yeah. but it had its highlights. Obviously, Ishii versus Eddie was one of my highlights. Yeah, uh, Kip was good. I thought. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the, the 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 tag team match, the ladder match, had its moment. I like the different finish of the ladder match. Yes, with retribution I just had to think out. what it was there. I didn't, but I can see why you would. Just because it was different. Yeah. Um, uh, the trio's tournament finals was fantastic. Even that. That couple of. I don't want Hangman to be naive. That's my issue with it. Yeah, yeah. he's been quite naive. Um, but if he goes back to being an alcoholic, cool alcoholic, give him yeah, the title, give him the belt, do it yeah. again. It's really good. Uh, but the matches were lacking in certain instances, like Athena and Jade should have gone longer. Starks and Hobbs should have been bigger. Yeah. Christian and Jungle Boy. I thought they could have done that a different finish. If Christian was injured, why not have Jungle Boy just squash him? Because mm. surely, yeah. That, that, that would have made sense. It yeah. depends how injured he is, I guess. Maybe they want Jungle Boy's revenge to be more dramatic. I don't know. But yeah. yeah, but there we go. We'll put it in there. I thought it was an all right card, but yeah. not one of the best. In AEW history, Oh, Jesus, right. We get to the final gimmick of these tier lists, everybody, where Jack the Jobber must decide what is the greatest pay-per-view in AEW history. First, look at the bottom three tiers. All right. Anything you want to change there? The only thing I'm thinking, just for the sake of having something in the bin, would be all out, but I don't know if that's harsh. That's, I think that's harsh. We worked out the stuff that kept out of the bin. We did, actually. Then, no, I'm, I'm happy with that, I think. Right, then. I think I was worried as well that we wouldn't represent that quite often the pay-per-views have been of a high quality, but I think if you look at that, we actually have... Yeah, maybe yeah. we should have put... Diff or maybe I should have put different TNA no, names for this one, because they've all been good, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, but now we get to, is All Out 2021 better than Revolution 2020? The one with Hangman oh, and just, Omega. Oh, just, Um... Then we get to Full Gear 2021. Is that better than All Out 2021? No, I think that's in the right place. Forbidden Door. Is it better than All Out 2021? Ross, this might sound crazy, but not only am I not going to put it higher than Revolution, I'm going to... I'm sorry, not only am I not going to put it higher than All Out, I'm not going to put it higher than Revolution, I'm going to put it there. Oh, wow. I loved Revolution as a show. Yeah. But I think that's a really strong top four. There we go. Yeah. One of the best. It's like back in the mid noughties Chelsea, Manchester United, <laughs> Liverpool, Arsenal. Yeah. All at the top four. Uh, tell us how much we are wrong in the comments down below. To that child I saw. I don't even know if he was that young. I was quite drunk at the time. To that <laughs> man I saw at the, at the Clash at the Castle. My name's Ross. It's not Gary. I'm just doing some Gary YouTube shiz knit right now. You know you'll be loving it. Aye. Right, that's it. Comment I down below. like a 35-year-old man. No, he was... He, his <laughs> he was voice, a young boy. His, a voice, young boy. his voice hadn't broken He's a yet. young boy. Yeah, he's a young boy. But uh, nice to see you. Uh, but uh, tell us how wrong we are. Like the video. Share the video. Leave a comment. If you can't think of what to say, just put AEW pay-per-views are invariably quite good from time to time. Oh, yeah. That's a good comment to leave. Any closing remarks? No, I've just had a nice time. Thank you for doing all that research, Ross. Bloody My hell. God. I thought it was oh, neat. Bloody. You need to paint oh, a picture, I, don't you? So absolutely. remind yourself and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So there we go. Hopefully I didn't...
Travel. I just did it now. Stumbled my words too much, but there we go. I've been Gary YouTube. That was some more Gary YouTubing. I nearly shut that laptop as well. Oh, God, don't do that. <laughs> the recording would have been lost. I would have to do this all over again. Oh, right. Goodbye, everybody.